CNN Radio. Identify yourself. It's the Tuesday Night Experiment. Broadcasting live from the center of new media at Northland Community and Technical College. All righty, all righty, all righty. It's time once again for the Tuesday Night Experiment on Pioneer 90.1 FM. Radio Northland.org. Feel the yeah. love. Feel the love. <laughs> Feel the love. It's in the air tonight. Oh, Lord. I like that disco <laughs> rhythm there, man. I dig that. Yeah. You know what? We had a little production day out here in the studio on Saturday. We had our very first Tuesday night experiment production day, me and the blind dog. Yeah. I, I was the prod god that day. Oh, yeah. Prod god indeed. He came up with this fine little intro, little opener. You know, because we had the Soul Train theme for a while, and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Yeah. Uh, you don't even want to know where I found this theme song. It's BBD Bop music there. Where, where, where? I don't know, man. Oh, okay. Uh, it's in the old '70s music collection, and I think there was a package of cocaine in the album too. So, oh yeah, that so was. So you can tell that's vintage '70s. From a, a, vin- a vintage record pusher who wanted a wanted couple extra spins that week. Yeah, a little payola with a little cola. <laughs> Some cola ola. As seen on uh, episode three of the first season of WKRP in Cincinnati. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I seen that one, dude. That's awesome. That's like one of my favorite episodes. Oh, uh, and do you th- he didn't give in to it, man. He said it. You got a drug problem, buddy. Yeah, and it was like it was always why are we playing this song all the time, you know? <laughs> Andy was like on it real quick. Oh yeah. Was it Andy the music director? Yeah, he program director or something <laughs> like that. He was the guy that kind of uh, helped out. He was the second in command of the big guy. Oh yeah. Actually third in command called Big Guy's Mom. This is Tuesday night experiment pioneer ninety point one FM radio northland dot O R G. Four minutes after seven o'clock. My name is Glenn Broggett. I think it still is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I got the, I got the papers all. I got it all cleared up. And I'm here with uh, a couple of my favorite sidekicks, the best of sidekicks in the entire uh, radio world. Well, at least on the terrestrial side. <laughs> oh, yeah. How, how's uh, that uh, web thing we did with uh, mocking uh, Ted Williams, the golden <laughs> voice guy? Is that getting more hits now? That's the voice of Blind Dog Scott Gilbert, by the way. Good yeah. evening, sir. Yeah. That's me in the flesh. Sugar Sean Slauson is the man who's going to answer <laughs> yeah. that question yes, that yes, Dog was I, given. Yeah, uh, well, what's the count on that? It was 900 the, and something last time. It was 900, time. and then uh, the, the final tally so far, anyway, is over 1,000. We have hit a yeah! So we, I think about We've got viral. 12, like 1,248 <laughs> about, you know. Or, Awesome. So, is, uh, is there a comment section on there too? There is a comment section on the videos. We we get a whole lot of feedback, but oh, okay. a lot of views though. You well, know, so. right? That's right? awesome. <laughs> I I think the people just want to find out who in the hell this blind dog is, man. Because yes. I'm a radio veteran, and you know, they're like, "Wow, Barney Miller's back!" Yeah, Barney Miller. Ow. Super 60s and 70s. Ow! Here's another one going out to Buxton. <laughs> <laughs> well, now oh, that, I missed the days of oldies radio, see, man. That was so fun. Now they know who you are because I just had to whip out the camera. Yeah, he's, oh, he's, no. He's, he's doing behind, he's doing they're they're probably TV. thinking, God, that guy's got the face for radio. It's true. <laughs> yeah, he did a little teaser with me before the show, a little pre-show uh, oh, interview okay. here. We did a little uh, walking around the studios here at the Broadcast Center at Pioneer 90.1. Oh, he gave the grand tour? Yeah, and you were busy doing your... Uh, Pride, he was, so, we uh, breaking, oh, he yeah. was breaking in a new talent. That's <laughs> right. I was showing a new guy how to mess stuff up on the cool edit or right, Adobe Audition Adobe or whatever. Yeah, yeah. One of them editing the gimmicks. Yeah. Oh, and you like the sound forge. I, I'm from, I just I'm from 1973. <laughs> yeah. I think, I, I think I'm, 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 next I'm going to be splicing reel the reels. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised you don't come back in a splice block with you. <laughs> sound forge works for me too because, I mean, uh, when we were yeah. talking about Adobe Audition, you know, that was kind of. A lot of ways to me, I thought it was pretty well, tricky. Well, everyone yeah. likes their own <laughs> recording program. It it just depends what you're comfortable with, 2011, right? <laughs> I pledge this will be the year that I finally, fully, completely embrace Adobe Audition. Yeah. Because yeah, I've done it before, but I haven't done anything with the with the intricacies of it. Okay. I, I've just done basic straight recording with it and just quick edits. I haven't done anything with, like, multi, multi-track or anything like that. But That's I'm, nice. I'm, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to make the adjustment. So that's what they call non-linear editing. 
Yeah, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> Whatever he said. Big fancy schmancy word. <laughs> like, Do you see the new plan- pamphlets over there about the radio business thing? Yeah, oh, yeah. I, yeah that is like <laughs> yeah. it's colorful yeah, and stuff. Not didn't even I see know. any of our pictures on those things, by the way. I, I'm, I'm a little mad about that. Oh, well, it's pictures maybe. from the old control room. I noticed that. Oh, it, yeah, yeah. Did you notice that the microphone's discolored, too? It, it's got that, like, there was a smoker in there breathing all over that. Sugar <laughs> Sean, I remember you were in the habit. <laughs> no, I... Coming from a blind guy here just describing it. Yeah, yeah. That so? that's what makes it all the more appealing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, guys, last week uh, we had our American Idol, our TNE Idol uh, thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we have to recap that because <laughs> we were just on such an emotional high that we really weren't talking too much sense after that. The phone, let me tell you what, since this thing went down, the phone lines have been ringing off the hook. Record companies from around the world, both independent and major labels, all oh. asking the same question. Who is that Sugar Sean Slauson? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, when, and where can we get, you know, what, when can we get a hold of him, sign him to a multi-album deal? How many ladies are you up to now? Oh, because of that, I man. Maybe 100, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Rough, rough count. <laughs> well, I, I admit, you know, after listening to the stream last week and, and putting it up, you know, right when I said I was going to put it up, it was up by Wednesday morning. If you guys paid attention to that at I all. I paid attention. I Do you get a counter on that, too, how many hits it gets? Yeah, this one. Uh, not this as hot. One, not as much. Yeah, oh, right. okay. See, we, we got to get a little bit saucy on that. A little over 200 views. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. That's not but bad. It's still That's views. still better than most. Do you get their IP address, too, with that? <laughs> No, it's, it's like, you know, this whole multi-streamer spam. thing, you know. It's yeah, like, we'll, we'll spam them up. <laughs> you too, well, yeah, I, I try to do that a little bit. Okay. I mean, not, sp- not trying to spam anybody, but just... Uh, just working with this Russian guy. We got to get spam, spam them man. Them That's Minnesota growing right there. Hormel, <laughs> baby. <laughs> I kind of figure we're gonna go talk about food. But the, but <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get us back off the track, uh, back on the track here. Yeah. This, this this karaoke thing. Yeah. Okay. Let's yeah. Talk that about this. Shug, oh. Shug is Sean. It's just like when he I stole d- the boat. Or yeah. The whole show there. By the, by the time he was done, you know, blind dog, you were dead in the water. So was I. I know. I and I totally bombed because I picked Bell Biv DeVoe and Poison. You know, but, I actually found the. the you haven't song. had rhythm since '95. I know. Yeah. I. I found that song online actually on YouTube. They have all that, all those tracks. Hey, look at, I, look I, at I gotta start hanging out with you know, college chicks again, man. You know, if you were, so. if you yeah. were, to, if you were completed the whole song, I think you would probably done a good job. You know? I, I, I had a hard time getting uh, <laughs> some of the lyrics. Maybe you know, we should have. If there. it was a three things person song, maybe we should have did a little uh, pre pre production. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think the three of us, what we should do for the post Valentine's Day Valentine's Day hangover show. Yeah, is, is get our butts in the studio, have a nice little track laid down for us, and we can sing some some songs together, duets, three parts, whatever it takes. I think that we could totally nail nail it down. And you know what? I've been like thinking Ooh, about. Yeah, I want to do muskrat love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> horse with no name. Come on. Dude. If we could find, oh, it's got to be sappy music for yeah, yeah. After Valentine's Day. I thought Day. the horse with no name would be sappy. It's but. not oh. sappy. Okay. You you gotta get you gotta yeah. learn definitions. <laughs> yeah. of what is proper, hey, you bro. you said like good songs that are on me. the radio. So you know, <laughs> and I hear that song all the time at Hugo's, like every day that I work. Well, there, that, so. that, that that does mean it's uh, sappy. Hey, are you able to mess? with the house music there at all? The actual uh, controls are actually in uh, the uh, security office. Oh. oh. So if I so wanted you gotta to... So you got to have the... Get the, the hairpin out. If, I, if I really <laughs> wanted to, I could probably, you know, I could pull some strings. You know, so and, next you know. time I go to Hugo's, he, I want to hear uh, some guar. Here's the, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. What he's going to do is he's going to walk up and actually open the door and walk in there and do it. Yeah. That's really pulling strings. Yeah, it's just, just just say, I'm I'm here for something. I don't know what it is. You but, see, uh, this is the thing, you know, they, they get a satellite feed and, and they've been on the same... What, there's not some old crotchety old guy in a DJ booth back there? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't have the income to, to do that. To destroy my dude. illusions. <laughs> <laughs> Well, use your illusions in there, Guns N' Roses guy. Anyway. I, I, I've, I've heard, uh, what was it the other day I was in there? Uh, Christina Aguilera was Probably playing like car- in Genie in the Bottle, baby. Oh, Car Wash, maybe? No, 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 that's it Rose, was Genie in the Rose Bottle, Royce, man. man. You know, I was thinking about these karaoke songs, Hell. and I think that this could be one that all three of us could sing. I don't know, I just, I was listening, oh, Saturday night, you know, on the eve of the big football games, I was sitting around by myself. And I was turning. There was nothing on TV. I, I watched the Pierce Morgan Howard Stern interview thing. Yeah. yeah. But I had nothing on TV, so I went to the audio channels. 
and I ended up on this sappy soft rock. So I have a weakness for soft rock. <laughs> oh, the DMX channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Have, and I have a weakness for soft rock. And we I all have those, it though. makes me so sad, but I still listen to it. Uh, I think oh. I'm a glutton for punishment. And here's a song I thought, you know what? I heard it, and I'm like, we could probably. And I found it as a karaoke version. Oh. Oh, I think, yeah. I think, I think it's appropriate for uh, the vibe of uh, what this show is all about. And this I, song reminds me of starving kids in Africa. That's the other song. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Just because you're a starving kid, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, who, we'd have to flip a coin because it'd be Dion Warwick. Yeah. Oh, boy. I think I would, I'm calling Dion Warwick. Yeah. Get back to pimping out your psychic friends or whatever. She's going to be on The Celeb Apprentice here coming up. Oh, yeah. And Star Jones? Oh. Man, he's... has that lady lost some weight or what? She's a star now. <laughs> <laughs> Better lay off of that methamphetamines, man. I think so. <laughs> oh. Star Jones, man. See, this is, I think this is a song that really, and a lot of people at home are probably thinking, this really captures the essence of you guys and what you're all about. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so okay. okay. Yeah, yeah I can imagine that. <laughs> Keep shining. No, and you can always count on me. But if we're going to do this, we got to do this right. We can't, we can't be Come on, blind dog. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Times in bad, bad times. times. <laughs> I'll be on your side. Yeah, you can always count on me, buddy. Forevermore. You need a yeah. ride? Well, I just left town 10 minutes ago. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, yes. Can you give me a ride to the lick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ten bucks. I see people right now with their lighters on. You know, need, uh, a, need a lift. Stick a jack up your butt. <laughs> doing a whole, uh, doing the whole candlelight thing or the lighter thing where they, you know, okay, okay. this way and that way. You know? that, that was one I think that we could really, really nail. But I think this one's even better. This one's going to be Sugar Sean. Uh, oh, now this song makes me want to vomit. Joe Cocker. Oh, yeah. Slauson, can you know the words to this one? Not really. <laughs> Come on, you can know the first line. It's Joe Cocker, the one that did uh, She Came In Through the Bathroom yep. Window. Yep. Yeah, that's my song. This is Slauson. Oh, yeah. So beautiful. <laughs> I'm talking to you, Glenn. Thank yeah. you. It's not a lot of words either. Oh, yeah. Sing it, brother. To me. Oh, keep it going. Keep it going. Can't you, oh. you, can't you see? You are so beautiful. So you got to do the Talk vice grip. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Keep it going. Keep it going, Come bro. Come on, buddy. To me. Here's your part. Can't, can't you see? see? No. <laughs> no, I can't see. Just because I'm blind. Just because I run into walls and stuff. Slauson, back to you. You're <laughs> everything <laughs> I need. Yes. <laughs> Here we go, brother. You are so beautiful. Well, thank you. To me. <laughs> I think we got it right there. I think we got it. We got it. Sugar Sean. Here. We just hit a new low. The sweet sensation. You know, I was listening to that song that we played at the end of the show last week. You know, that Joe Cocker, put your, leave your hat on. You leave your hat on. Aww. I actually kind of jammed in that a little bit. I actually, That's a good tune. Know, it rocks. I listened to it yeah. a couple times. Yeah. Take really... off your dress. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That, you know, that's the type of song you could be in the living room with a lady and you could just start swinging it down, man. Yeah. yeah. You, yeah, yeah, it you down never know. Downtown down. Julie Brown, buddy. Yep. <laughs> You, you just know how never to get know. up, but you best get there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Booyah. <laughs> oh, little rim shot. Uh, uh, you know, guys, it's uh, 16 minutes after 7 o'clock, and I have, uh, you know, I was looking around the billboard charts, finding out what the kids are listening to these days. <laughs> Those oh, kids, is CeeLo yeah. Green still up there on the top? Well, uh, not in this chart, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> after we butchered it last week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was looking for me. He left a voicemail that was a bit nasty. It's like, why do we have this Slauson nice. character play, uh, sing, try to sing my song? Now Frank is Slauson, he don't know nothing. <laughs> 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 I'm going to take him out one time. I got old ladies to play with me. Yeah, don't worry about I it. I thought I did pretty good on the, the like first Robert couple. Palmer. Verses, anyway, or lyrics, or whatever, I guess. Yeah. Oh, man. You know what? I verse, think, course, verse. Whatever, bridge, yeah. whatever. You know? Oh, you know, I think if I, I'm going to look around here, I think there's another song that uh, maybe Slauson could probably sing, too. I'm always looking for you, and I'm looking out for you, Slauson. I hope it's a manly tune, though. Nothing too weird or whatever. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> if you can find the lyrics to this, you'll be my best friend. I'll be your best friend in the whole world. Oh, yeah. I hey. think this one's yours, brother. Robert Palmer, huh? 
You know, Whatever happened so this to all those chicks that looked the same in that video? I wonder if they carried his coffin when he passed away. <laughs> <laughs> They all dressed the same. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's right. He's in the grave now. Why? Why was it always yeah. those videos? Is always the same women, and then there was always one in a bathing suit getting water. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had his greatest hits album, uh, Addicted, I believe. Or, you know, yeah. like, like you sell yeah. it or use it for fuel? Or no, whatever. no, no. You know how cheesy I am when Gletty put this into the system earlier. <laughs> Started dancing to it. I even knew the album title that this came off. He of. dropped no. that. Is that on? Did you have the Heavy Nova album? <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, and I felt just bad because I knew what it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, it's awesome. Simply irresistible. <laughs> do, 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 do. I think Slauson, we should have got a lip sync thing. Slauson can have a bunch of girls in a band. Can we have like, like smoke in the background or whatever? Ten girls dressed the same, swaying back and forth. Oh, great. You know, it'd be kind of that funny. Would work. If we had a spoof video. If we, yeah. did, if we did that, I'd have to do like a. Uh, like come out or like like make my grand entrance or something like that. Why don't like, you go to like uh, Oakland <laughs> Park, the retirement home, and start recruiting, man? Get some hotties out of there. Yeah, yeah. that's where I want to start. Uh, uh. And then so you do that during bingo time out there. Well, yep. you got a thing for homes, I tell you. Are you trying to tell me something here? HTT, hot trot. <laughs> yeah, that's Hot's right, man. All right, guys. I mentioned uh, we yes, were, I went to the yes, Billboard yes. charts. I uh, yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> Again, I'm a glutton for punishment. Kind of the same way we I listen love to, Billboard. I listen yeah. to soft rock on weekends when I'm <laughs> by myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got the top five pop tracks here as chosen by the great folks at Billboard magazine. Let's find out how hip we really are. In at number five this week is Escape by. You remember this guy? He used to have a mold, and he now he doesn't. And he's uh, doing Anna Kornikova. It's Enrique Iglesias. Oh, oh yeah. Geez. Enrique. <laughs> oh, yes. This is the one I had on in my car when I picked you up tonight, wasn't it? <laughs> I, think his, I think his father, Julio, made a guest appearance on the Golden Girls a long time ago. Yeah. When that show was running. Yeah, thanks for the 20 year old reference. Well, you're welcome. Flip Flavin, you know. <laughs> was he working on. Uh, uh... He was with that Blanche lady. No, no, no. He was Sophia's. Oh, oh La Blanche. Oh. He was Sophia's blind date. I love you, La Blanche. Right. The, yeah. The, I think I remember that episode. Dance. The girl, right. the girls <laughs> didn't believe him. Go didn't Glenn. Believe, go Glenn. The girls didn't believe her that uh, Julio was well, their I'm date. Go, I'm her go her to date. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I'm going to go throw up now. Thank you. <laughs> See, uh, we should bring a bucket in here sometimes. <laughs> yes, we might, be able to, we might need it, you know. I, tell you. I can't help it. I like this song. Yeah. What are you talking about? You acting uh, So this is, uh, what, top five current hits now? Yep. yep. Uh, okay. Okay, that's number five. 11. Enrique yeah. Iglesias Escape. I'm kind of worn out from dancing. <laughs> is it like a G6 on there? No, no. Oh, that, that's man. so two that's, months ago, yeah, dog. So Come on, dude. I like that song. That's number four is what Rihanna you? featuring Drake. What's my name? Oh, yeah, I know it. Yeah. This, this might be the song you danced to, G. I think this chick was on Ellen today. Are you dancing? Yeah. Fun dog, hey, hey. Come on, ladies, don't run. <laughs> <laughs> run away from you. I heard you good with them soft lips. So this yeah, is what yeah. we listen to now, huh? This yeah. Is, this is what we're listening to. We're going to have a whole show like this. This is what the kids listen to today. Wow. Yeah, we digging it. Where's Eddie Murphy? Party all the time. Oh, come on. 30-year-old <laughs> references now, Slosser. That's what I want to listen to. Yeah, the kids are doing Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. Playing Nintendo or whatever. <laughs> playing you know? <in> television. <laughs> you know, nowadays, kids don't know what music is, you know? Their man. ColecoVision broke down in the, tra- well, the middle of the Donkey Kong <laughs> That's one thing game. that we can see. Say in our lives that we grew up with some of the great music, you know, that we oh, experienced. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you know. I'm, I'm glad I missed part of the '80s, man, because I don't want to sit through a flock of seagulls. And, oh come on, oh, I come ran on. so far away. That's number four. I, I want to run as far away from that song <laughs> as possible. Beyond a feature, Drake. What's my name? Number three. It's the lovely <laughs> Katy Perry oh, with yeah. Firework. Oh yeah, I've heard this song yeah. before. She's promiscuous. She did. A, she was on what, a YouTube what? or whatnot doing an interview with go. somebody. Yeah, yeah. Her and that Miley weren't they the ones doing that Sylvia? I don't know if it was her. No, or not. I know it was Miley. Boy, Katy Perry. Who's this? Joe Perry's daughter? <laughs> no, no. She would have more talent. <laughs> <laughs> She co- she's the one that comes off like that. Yeah, I'm just a goofy bimbo. <laughs> but I can sing. 
Like, I, just, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, me neither. I'm really having a hard time figuring out what's going on with the world. Promiscuous uh, uh, girl. I mean, we're, we're crossing the bridge here. We can hit the chorus here. Let's just, okay. Just I can't even dance to this. I, I mean, she was on SNL not too long ago either. Yep. Yeah. I thought the billboard. I thought the billboard was represented good music with guitars, drums, vocals. Where, where you know? have you been? Oh, I guess 2011. Well, you know, Sean if, Van Winkle. Over if there if rock is dying, well, I tell you, what, this is why. Oh, yeah. Man, we're <laughs> rolling horse, down the road of bubblegum music. That yeah. horse has been euthanized a long time ago, yeah. Sugar Man. Yeah, Jeez. we got Bruno you got Mars glue at home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bruno Mars Uh-oh. in at number two this week. A man. Number two this week, Bruno Mars with Grenade. You know, I think we... No, think they're shutting the door. They got a class. Okay. Because I, I, I we're too hip across yeah, the hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, get, we're so loud, you know. Uh, obnoxious. I thought these studios were soundproof. <laughs> oh. Uh, this, yeah, you know, this is like I, like I don't even know if I want to hang out with two? you. Yeah, Bruno Mars should be more grenade. like two hundred. Yeah, more like a drop at number two. The real this. Bruno Bruce Willis should be at number one right now. Yeah, what's, <laughs> a, what's the deal with all the music now? Where they're using the the talk box and a lot of stuff. You know the because nobody has talent. They don't. Well, you know, unless you're a rock musician, that's that is right. different. Or country musician too. I Why guess. can't you be like bands like Clutch or something? Yeah. Play your instruments. Like, like even the Foo Fighters that can rock and roll. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, they got mainstream acceptance. Yeah. And they, and they can still rock. See, you know, they, they should uh, pay attention to bands like them, Crooked Vultures, you know, a star-studded band like that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know. That's an ASC. That's an all-star cast right there. <laughs> That's Bruno Mars. In at number one this week, we found this one on uh, the World Wide Web. Uh, <laughs> see, that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, rolling. Great. I'm as funny in the studio. <laughs> this is, this is the, this is the uh, Frankie fi- or Sean Slauson featuring Blind Dog and Glenn Mix. Is this, is this Eminem on there? <laughs> and Drake. Uh, when the moon hung soft and low. <laughs> you know, another surprise from Glenn, I tell you. Uh, you help me closer and closer. <laughs> There was magic in the night. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> yeah, I thought I nailed it pretty good, you know. Yeah, you nailed us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, that you said something, I bet you. <laughs> Let the man sing, Sloss. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're stepping all over yourself. <laughs> whoa, whoa, tender years. Whoa, <laughs> you <laughs> wash away. Now this music. I'm gonna try. I'll get the winner here. How I wish you were here. Wait a minute. I can hear you talking. The, what's on the recording oh, last night? Studio Jam, dog. Oh, that's it's right. The dog show. Summer <laughs> love. <laughs> Two minutes left. Saturday. <laughs> God, I hope I hope Mark doesn't play this on the. <laughs> I hope he doesn't play it on the regular day-to-day basis. I think it was on this morning. Never, never, never. never, never. (laughs) Actually, I think I heard this right after the job report. (laughs) Yeah, because, you know, Carl, you know, that's his favorite song now. That's what he told me on Facebook. (laughs) Please don't go, tender years. Look at the phone lines lighting up. (laughs) And a start break right here. Yeah. All right, man. That's the number wow. one song. No, no. Here's the I, real one. Britney Spears, hold it against me. No, oh, come on. Now you got to make it horrible. Yeah, again. Britney <laughs> into his house. Coming in at number one, it's Britney Spears. Get that post. Oh, <laughs> man, you you could be on top 40 radio, buddy. I could just be like Spider Harrison yeah. on serious hits. I and saw what? the janitor were an M- uh, MP3 player so on his head, so I think he's listening to the song, too. It's his favorite. <laughs> Oh, tender years. <laughs> See, that's real music. At least I can say that you know I performed a real song yeah. you know, for you. Yeah. yeah, move over, Rick Aker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should be on Conan right now. Jeez. You got more, you got more <laughs> rhythm than a like, uh, an old school Quaker. <laughs> uh, I trim my own butter. I tell you. I'm gonna get up and dance by against Lawson. Yeah, that's great. Oh. Oh my God! It's 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 Club Pioneer ninety point one now. Oh, great. Getting jiggy with it. 
<laughs> the lights. The lights are starting to dim. Oh my God. Here comes a bottle of Kavastier. <laughs> I think that's what I'll have drinking a right sip now. for that. <laughs> that's the number one song for this year. Cold this boozing Tuesday. <laughs> Hold it against me, guys. Should we take a brief break? Please uh, play a tune or two, and then yeah. get back in. We're get, we got some news concerning one of Sean's favorite music artists. All right. Hey, kid, you should look up that uh, news story I told you about earlier. Oh yeah. Well. well yeah. Oh, well, where is it now? Uh, I'll, I'll show you how to navigate as we take a commercial yeah we'll, we'll play two tracks here we got some new stuff from plan b and uh yeah we'll play something else after that too so after these messages we'll be right back yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i started huffing half the stuff under the kitchen sink in junior high school eventually i tried any drug i could get my hands on coke shrooms meth it was easier than dealing with my real life after i got arrested my aunt let me move in with them But she said, Max, if you can't stay clean, you can't live here. And when I broke our deal, she helped me get into Teen Challenge. I knew I had a problem, but I didn't know how to get out of it. But this place helped me get free from my addiction. Sometimes, drugs look like the cool thing to do. Like everyone's having a good time. But when you're hooked, the party life stops. And the torment of the drug addiction takes over. It's not exactly cool when you're paranoid and hallucinating, severely depressed, or when you lose your family and friends because of drug abuse. If this is an issue you're dealing with, Minnesota Teen Challenge can help. Please give us a call at 612-FREEDOM or check us out on the web at mntc.org. Hi, I'm Jan. And I'm Jim. And we are the hosts for the Pioneer 90.1 FM Root Cellar program on Northland College Radio. I present what is happening in Minnesota, the history, current topics, and other relative information about our state. In other words, what are our roots? I give more local information from Thief River Falls and the surrounding area. We can be heard at 6.30 p.m. in the evening on Mondays on the Kathy Erickson Show, 7.30 a.m. on Wednesday morning with Ben, and 8 a.m. on Sunday morning with Mark. We hope you will join us. You can also hear our earlier programs by going to the Pioneer 90.1 FM website and click on Podcasts. Until then... Bye Bye for for now. now. 90.1 FM. (laughs) That was uh, Blind Dog contributing to the Dead Weathers Blue Blood Blues here on the Tuesday Night Experiment Pioneer 90.1. Doesn't that that sound like, uh, what is that, Balls or Walls of Confusion? uh, Sounds like Jack White. You know which tune I'm talking about, right? Run, run, run. Uh, All the confusion. Yeah. Evolution, revolution, yeah, and then uh, what's his face? Dave Mustaine covered that. Really? Yeah, man. I I know my music. Twenty three away from eight o'clock on the Tuesday night experiment. And, what's uh, the temp outside? Well, let me uh, <laughs> cue up the weather here. Uh, here, we don't even have that. Let's. Uh, up. Hey, Channel Eleven's got a new news set, man. Why can't we have a new weather department here? I don't know. We're still. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the we- the first weather set? department to show oh, up. Man, it looks sharp. <laughs> 16 and overcast. They they got that Stephanie Getz now standing up so you can see all the curbs. <laughs> well, she's like nine feet tall. Yeah, she, yeah. she she uh, jumped ship from uh, WDAY. <laughs> Remember that guy over. with the big bags under his eyes? <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks a lot, Stephanie. <laughs> I do the Sunday night news. Six people watch. <laughs> Rob Kupek's going to be stopping by with the weather forecast for the week. It's going to be a real doozerooty. <laughs> well, it's not as bad as Milo Smith with his big Dumbo ears, man. <laughs> Miss you already, nice Milo. guy, though. I like the guy. Miss you already, Milo. Yeah. He's well, we gone gotta... now. Where did he go? Charlie Johnson. Nobody Charlie knows. Johnson uh, yeah. put him on a cornfield by Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little meet me in the middle mob style stuff. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. He's sleeping with the fishes, see? <laughs> Well, you know what? We've uh, we got some news here. I- I've opened up the bureau to uh, the blind dog. Blind Breaking dog, news! He had some news story that he was telling me about. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Save it for the show. And then he saved it for the show. Right. Because, you know, I don't believe in, like, uh, setting stuff up. You know, like, okay, here's how we're going to do this. Unnat- blah, blah, blah. Unnatural yeah. segues. Yeah. Just let it rip, man. That's... 
That's the way a real That's radio I just, show goes. I, I just did. Anyway. <laughs> You guys know where Fergus Falls is at, right? Yeah, you've been there once, Lawson? I've been there a few times. I know where that is. Spent a little time at the Nut Hut down there? No, I just go okay. through, go on to DL, you know? Well, here's a guy that's <laughs> definitely going to the Nut Hut. Fergus Falls, sole collector, accused of trying to cut off toes. What? I, yeah. <laughs> Check this Soul out. Sole collector? A man. I thought it was a guy who collected, like, Temptations records. <laughs> <laughs> Four tops, anything? <laughs> Motown's that way, buddy. <laughs> so a man calling himself a soul collector and a medicine man, now he's getting the natives involved, is accusing of trying to... shaman now? <laughs> hey, I'm part native, brother. Well, yeah. Recognize does that make it. you a shaman? Uh, shaman? Shaman, shaman. Shaman, shaman, shaman potato, potato, whatever. I'll get back to the story. I'm <laughs> he is accused of trying to cut off his neighbor's toe, a neighbor even... And uh, Scalpelman in Fer- uh, Fergus Falls. Oh, wow. 42-year-old Timothy Eugene Peterson is charged with attempted murder and secondary assault. Oh, According wow. to a complaint, Ivan Skip Malice was working in his garage early Sunday when Peterson approached him and allegedly began uh, chanting while trying to cut off uh, some of Malice's toes. That's Malice, heavy, says, <laughs> Malice <laughs> says Peterson then tried... To uh, slit his throat, scalp him, and uh, stab him in the chest while telling Malice that he needed to collect his soul. The Daily Journal reports that after Peterson left, Malice fled to a neighbor's house. Malice was treated for wounds to his neck, both hands, and left foot. So uh, wow, maybe he wanted to chop up a few digits, too. Uh, <laughs> Peterson... Uh, I think he's better off trying to collect that forty-five of my girl instead. <laughs> <laughs> It's different soul thing, okay? Sorry. <laughs> that there was uh, a guy in Grand Forks that used to come over at a buddy of mine's house, and uh, I swore it's, I think it's the same guy. It's got to be, dude. It's got to be. Wow, that's uh, the he, slow- he got it close to home, huh? Oh, yeah, the, no kidding. The soul collector. <laughs> the soul collector. Yeah, not of music, of actual souls. Do you, do you souls. think he had a fetish for, like, toe jam or something like that? <laughs> yeah. I'd rather have grape jam. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> drink your drink your little uh, Minute Maid gimmick over there. Oh, I will. It's pretty tasty. Hey, uh, I thought you were done with soda pop. What's up with that? This ain't soda. This is Minute Come Maid. Come on. This is cherry lime. How, how many calories are in that bad boy? Ten. 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 Oh man. One yeah, gram man. of sugar. Congratulations, yeah. you yeah. got us. <laughs> hey, how about that guy out in uh, California that's gonna make uh, that pot soda? Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. I never heard about that one. Well, <laughs> let me tell you guys. Okay. Being that marijuana is legal in California yeah, for, for medicinal, medicinal purposes, purposes with right? prescription, yes. So for the people that don't like to inhale it, this guy in California, he now developed and he's manufacturing this soda pop that's made from THC. It's put right in the soda pop. Well, that'll, huh. be that'll be good for those who are, you know, uh, you know, with the cancer patients and whatever. You don't have the stomach for it or whatever. Just imagine the sales of that. How much it'll go it, up, It's man. definitely better than that Four loco crap. That just... Oh, yeah. They're, they're finding kids dead all over the place, man, getting all hopped up on that. And I heard, uh, what, what is that one AM show, uh, Clothesline or whatever it is? They were talking about it earlier today. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Rec Room or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> the Rec Room. Hey, uh, Come down to my sassy appliance place. And, but but uh, the whole th- but the whole thing is, they've been talking about that for months. Now they finally got wind of the four loco thing. I mean, it's been going on since fall. Like I, fall. I, I think Minnesota already pulled that stuff from their shelves. Hey, yep, I remember hearing something about that too. It's like well, here's the thing, I don't when I'm drinking, I usually just drink beer. You know, when really? I, when I do, you don't I, go for the hard stuff. I've I've kind of went. I it, it's run its course with me. Oh, really? I, I don't like waking up with the full headaches. I'm just getting old. It just doesn't work the way. Yeah, used to. just don't, don't wake up with a headache, dude. Just start drinking again, man. That's I'm how not, you care. I, I, I can't subscribe to the the hair of the dog uh, defense. Oh. That's just not going to work for me. Man, you can't stay drunk all day if you don't start in the morning. Uh, but I, get, <laughs> I usually wake up and I got about nine things to do. I've got things set up. I got my I'm micromanaging What's myself. What's your here. beer of choice? My beer of choice, well, I, if it's for domestics. I like I like Miller Light. Oh man! But man. I like Heineken when I'm uh, Heineken Light. Is, is when you're feeling good. sassy. Well, yeah. When I'm when I'm not in, you know, when I'm just sitting around having a few drinks with yeah. friends or whatever. Right. So I ain't gonna go buy Heineken in the bar. That's way too pricey. Yeah. 
Unless fun. it's happy hour, you know. Yeah, but I mean, I I, I show, if I do show up to a bar, it's usually kind of late. So, but it's been a long time since I've been in one of those. Well, you know, actually, Saturday. But I mean, <laughs> how, about, how about how about this philosophy, man? Right? Okay. Lay it on. So, man. do you think it's wise to? Catch a good beer buzz at home and then go to the bar thinking that you won't spend as much money? You know, the whole pre gaming notion? Yeah. Well, the thing is, when, well, what I was doing it a little more frequently, I mean, we get a gaggle of friends over. Yep. We turn up the music because, you know, sometimes it started off when you're watching TV. Okay. It's like, I'm not going to sit around and watch sitcoms. Well, the thing is, the right? best thing works in the spring and summer on a Friday night or Saturday. You turn baseball on, you uh-huh. put it on mute. I usually flip on the XM Sirius receiver. We listen to tunes. And we work on our buzzes. And by the time it gets to be like 10 o'clock, 10.30, it's like, hey, let's get into the cab and head on up to, uh, to the... To, the, to the rusty snail? One of those places. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, a, a watering hole. <laughs> okay, any real watering hole, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, and that whole thing of like, yeah, you know, we're going to drink a lot here. We're going we're gonna to save, mix them up. No, by the time we get there, we're so full and just not thinking straight. That, oh, shots here, shots there. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I I haven't had shots in a while, but I remember how it used to go. It's like you oh, spend yeah. more money on shots and pitchers of beer than you like this whole strategy of let's buy in bulk right away and save a bunch of money. It never works. It doesn't. I, I've tried that too, and you end up in effect spending more money at the bar because because you're loose. You're <laughs> already getting loaded, and you go up there. Ah, twenty bucks. What's that? Oh, is there a cash machine over there? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. my favorite three letters: A T and M. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was A T and T, but anyway. Uh. So you, you can call never, somebody. You, know? you got to get to yeah. That's 1980s again. <laughs> you got to stop dialing down the center. Bro. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, there, Carrie Top. Yeah, look where that guy is at, Mister Prop Comic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now back to jerking the, beer. the curtain with Gallagher too. Now back to the beer thing. Yes. All right. All right. Being that they ban smoking in bars now. And now you hear about in Minnesota that they're trying to bring back smoking in bars. Really? I saw For news clubs. Story. Well, yeah, I think not in restaurants, but just in in bars. I think they were talking about it last night on the news. Oh, some right? uh, Minnesota Republicans want to make this happen. Uh oh, you know when the Republicans talk, man, you got to reach for your wallet, dude. Well, they're probably thinking, yeah. man, we got to put some cash back into the state yeah. now, and that's uh, you know every little bit of the, every little bit that helps, I guess. But I mean, speaking it, of people from the state, uh, did you hear about Jesse Ventura? Yeah, the Homeland Security yeah, thing. Yeah, the... uh, he filed a lawsuit against Homeland Security because he uh, had hip surgery or whatever. Uh-huh. So he's got, like, nuts and bolts or whatever in there. Oh, he's bionic. Yeah, <laughs> so he's tired of that machine going off every time he flies, but, you know. But now with the scans and whatever, yeah. you know. it's is it, Was it unlawful search and seizure or some sort of I don't what know. He's taking I, it for? I just caught a little blurb about that. Yeah, I, I, caught, I caught it on the Huffington Post here yesterday in the afternoon. I'm like, mm, that's interesting. The body is going after Homeland Security. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm take them down. <laughs> oh, I was working at this one radio station in Forks. Uh, they used to have the program Lunch with the Governor. Yeah. Yeah, you remember that? <laughs> I remember lunch with the governor, <laughs> Governor Ventura. Tell me some more here, blind dog. Uh, yeah, Jesse. Uh, I, well, are you going to serve this uh, steak already? I mean, there's a little bit of blood dripping, but I'll eat it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back, back, back to your point. <laughs> anyway. What were we talking about? We were talking about beer. <laughs> oh, well, okay. So you like the domestic beer, but if you're feeling uh, supersonic, uh, supersonic, you'll go for uh, Heineken, light, Heineken, and maybe some Red Stripe. All right, Red Stripe's a good little beer. All right. Uh, I'm an Amberbach person. Not too shabs. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks pretty good coming out too. <laughs> it, it, it's colorful. Let me tell you something. I love Amberbach. Yeah, we're gonna have that with lunch with the governor. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, I like it because it's got a lady's name in there, Amber Box. Amber Box sounds great. It's never got sassy with me. <laughs> well, yeah, Amber Box, and it's stronger beer too. Yeah, that makes it good stuff. Not a bad little beer. Get back to class, you. Well, that, well, that, con- <laughs> well, that concludes beer talk here on the Tuesday Night Experiment. Yeah. I promised a news story. Booze and Tuesday. I promised a news story about one of Slauson's favorite oh, people. Oh, yes, yes, my favorite guy. Yeah, I teased this long enough. Uh, we're going to play his music first. Oh, yes. I- <laughs> I'll bet. Oh, 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 oh. 
I've listened to this a few times. You know, what the heck. You know? If we're going to listen to crappy music, we might as well just listen to this. You know? <laughs> well, we got news coming out of Hollywood. Right, it's a Sugar Sean's party. You know? <laughs> so the, the theme for the show tonight is bubblegum music. Yeah, former teen star Aaron Carter has checked in the rehab to treat emotional and spiritual yes! issues. Emotional and spiritual issues? Are I told him it was a matter of time. Let me tell you something, brother. The 23-year-old <laughs> has been receiving treatment at a private facility in California since earlier this month, according to E! Online. Carter's manager, Johnny Wright, Slick Johnny Wright, tells the website, Several months ago, Aaron came to me to help him return to music and to restart his career. He had been in Orlando working on a new album and perfecting his live show and physical body. Yeah, so while other people work, Aaron's parties down in Orlando making this crappy album that six people are going to buy. Perfecting his live show. What is he singing mm-hmm. on lip syncing with a comb in front of a mirror? <laughs> yeah. And working out. He's got the he got the bow flex out, I guess. Aaron, understanding the challenges and hard work it would take to get himself back to the top, requested to take some time before he, we started to heal some emotional and spiritual issues he was dealing with. Aaron's got to take care of Aaron. Yep, yep. Therefore, he has chosen to enter a facility where he feels he will get the guidance and cleansing he needs that will help him on the music journey he's about to take. Wow, he's, you think this guy was, like, saving the world with his music? I think he's at the <laughs> same treatment center that Golden Voice guy was at. Could oh, be. <laughs> well, let me, let me tell you something. I just ditched that rehab a couple of days ago. I 86 the joint. I got to get out and get me some Grey Goose. Grey Goose and a big bowl of crack. <laughs> well, I got the money from the Kraft Macaroni and Cheese people. <laughs> yeah. He asked that everyone keep him in their prayers and that they respect his privacy at this time. <laughs> Carter, Carter hinted he was having a few problems at a Twitter.com post earlier this month, writing, Life has its ups and downs. You can only live and learn. Never lose faith and always believe in yourself, as I am learning to do every day. The following day, he added, The odds are good, but the goods are odd. Yeah, <laughs> right, dude. That sounds like words from a publicist. Eh? <laughs> that just sounds like, you know, when somebody posts those, you always have to wonder about their mental health. Yeah. Yeah, win some, lose some, man. Mm. Life is a gamble. <laughs> now, Justin Bieber, when's that guy going to rehab? Let me tell you something about Justin Bieber. <laughs> he eats Kraft macaroni and cheese. <laughs> so he'll never go to rehab. <laughs> uh, good old Teddy Williams is yeah. coming over for dinner tonight. Listen, listen to the Teddy, man. I'll be, making, I'll be making that on a hot plate that I plugged into the side of a building you here. Just call yourself, you just call yourself the Teddy? <laughs> Wow. Uh, the Golden Voice? The Teddy. Golden yeah. Voice. Teddy Williams, man. Oh, I like that. The Teddy. That's, that's pretty yeah, classy. Teddy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He loves his mama. <laughs> well, we got, eight, we got eight minutes. You want to do a quick little concert report here, G? Oh, hey, yeah. Let's go. do it. The Vault of Rock. I'm digging the Vault of Rock. Vault of rock right now, baby. Ready to rock in three, two, one. Ready to rock. Ready to rock. All right. It's time for a new feature here on the Tuesday Night Experience, and it's time for me to experience you guys with some uh, badass shows coming up around here in the area. So if you can uh, lickety split all the way down to Minneapolis, you can check out Snoop D O Double G. I'm gonna head over to the railroad track to jump in the first open car. That's right. You like Snoop Dogg? Oh yeah, for shizzle, my nizzle. That's right, Snoop. What's his real name? I forgot his real. Isn't name. Isn't that Calvin Brodus? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Or is that the guy from? Uh, Two Live Crew. No, that's, no, that's uh, Luther, Luther Campbell. That's Luther Campbell. The artist formerly known as Luther Sky- Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Well, back to the... Okay, anyway, uh, pretty uh, pretty light here for some shows playing, but anyway, Snoop Dogg tonight down in Minneapolis. Huge, huge show coming up next month. Motorhead, baby. Uh, all right. Woo! And Clutch. <laughs> that's a double dip right yeah, there that I right wouldn't there. mind getting in, involved with and checking that out, man. Playing the time. hub down in Fargo on <laughs> February 13th. Uh, this area is about to be graced with the presence of the almighty Lemmy. Oh, yeah. uh, yes. Finally. Mm. And it's a day before Hump It Up Day, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. it's uh, what uh, maybe a few days after the DVD release of Lemmy's autobiography. Oh, there you there, go. Can we get him on video the show? Video documentary. Not autobiography. Video documentary. Sorry. Oh, not the book, because I, I ain't going to write no book. <laughs> Don't you know, I'm not going to write no book. I bloody yeah. know. <laughs> I'm bloody about that crap. <laughs> what, 
<laughs> Remember that movie Airheads? What was that quote on there? Oh, uh, yeah, Airheads. Choose Lemmy or Lemmy or God, and that one dude goes, "No, man, Lemmy is God." <laughs> born to born to raise hell. That's what I say. <laughs> Airheads. That's, I like that, was that the movie. Airhead soundtrack. Yeah, born to raise I, hell. Do you have that? I don't. Ha- I, I think I have it in a two pack or whatever. Two pack. Not two pack, but two pack. <laughs> They're too cool to just press one disc and they had to make two in one. No, yeah, yeah, it's a double feature. You can record P- your favorite songs PC, on the second one. <laughs> it's, uh, P- I think it's PCU on one disc and then uh, Airheads on the other. Holy uh, PCU. I remember yeah. seeing that uh. one in the theater back in like 94. Yeah, Jeez. that was a good movie too. Jeremy Piven? <laughs> and, back, back when he had almost all of his real hair? George Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> John, yeah. John Favreau was in there playing yeah. a, a very heavy set John Favreau was in that movie. And David Spade. David Spade. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, who else? Are we still talking about Airheads? No, we were oh, talking PCU. about PCU. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was a double disc in that. Mm-hmm. See Buscemi so with Airheads. So what do you Airheads? think of that yeah. music in the background there, brother? So, I think I think I like yeah. this. I think I like it a lot, bro. Sounds like a combination of Motorhead meets a new NWO theme or something. <laughs> NWO. You know, you know what? Order, we, yeah. we talk a lo- you talk a lot about wrestling. <laughs> what I, we should do, Blind Dog. I, I, I've got a few uh, people around the area uh, uh-huh. I'm working on. Maybe we should start talking to some of the local independent wrestlers in the state of Minnesota in the upper part, and we can get Slauson involved with some wrestling. Ah. <laughs> that would be excellent. Right? right? That would be the dream right some there. Local <laughs> indi- we got some independent locals. I mean, I can get you. I can get, this, get a hold of this guy. We can have him on the show. And we could have him talk and some wrestling smack with with Sugar Sean. That would be all right. Are uh, you uh, willing to get roid up? <laughs> Hey, I'm all about wrestling. You know, real or fake? Well, I, you know, roids come with wrestling. Well, no, I'm not going to do roids, but you know, I'm, I'm, come you on, know. they just H- call D- it HGH over yeah, here. Yeah, you know, <laughs> no, I, 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 you know, I'm a big wrestling it's fan. It's just enhancement drugs. Come on now. Yeah, but it'll get you a lot of trouble. Look at Hogan. Look at all the people None that of were, them went you know, to jail. Yeah, look at Hogan. No. He's doing rent the center commercials yes, now. But and he's you know, crippled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After his wife all the left him too. Yeah. Steroids she bought a no boat good. called Alimony with his money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, That's a shoot, not I'm, a word. I'm big on wrestling. I, you know, I always have been. People give me a lot of slack because I watch it on TV still, but, you know. Do you just watch for the storylines? I watch for everything. I'm just like, just like a Don't movie. Don't you know it's fake? I, some some things are yeah, fake. It, yeah. It's all fake, dude. <laughs> but I but I live for wrestling and you I know, breathe wrestling. We got to get, the, we gotta get <laughs> some local wrestlers in here on either on the phone or maybe in person. And we could have a, the whole great wrestling debate with Sugar Sean. It and reminds the me of back in 2006 when I had the Salad privilege, uh-huh. when I had the privilege to do my first ever actual interview on the radio here with, for one hour with uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine. Greg the Hammer Valentine at the I casino, remember. right? I remember that. Yeah. I remember they had a bunch of guys out there. Yeah, that was kind of X Pac was thing. there and all that. And Greg Valentine. Was he was there. he was there physically. Yeah, just not there. mentally. <laughs> 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 Who's that? Uh, the one wrestler back in, oh, I'd say, 03, 04 that uh, was in Grand Forks for Raw or whatever. Okay. Uh, years after that, he ended up freaking out on roids and killed his wife and then oh, killed himself. Chris, Chris Benoit? Benoit. Yeah, yeah, I did yeah. an interview with that guy, man. Oh, really? When, yeah. they, were, when they came up? Or yeah. Before? Okay. Yeah, they popped yeah. in a uh, good old cheap channel right over yeah. there, right next to the building, and a uh, nice stretch limo and uh, came in there. And oh, uh, wow. One thing I didn't like about the interview is his roadie manager guy whatever yeah. he gave me just like a quick piece of paper and like here here's a bio uh, yeah. read over this quick like three minutes before the whole thing had to take place on the air and i just kind of winged it you know so you wrestle in your underpants <laughs> yeah i i just I, I, I asked him a few questions i was like um you know who were your favorite wrestlers growing up and he just yacked away so it's all right yeah. but that uh pretty cool then we're bsing too about some of the older wrestlers up here, like uh, the Claw, Baron yeah, Von yeah, Raschke. Yeah, yeah. Uh, his parents used to own a shop in Bemidji, I guess. I think he took over for that, didn't he? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the, the, yeah. Uh, some of the older guys that were with that dude, that wrestler, they knew a lot of the older wrestlers up here. And like uh, us, you know, school, yeah. they like us with DDP, you know, even when I had Diamond a, Dallas Page, even when I had the a, of the Diamond Exchange. Oh. Even when I had a privilege to interview him back in 06 as well. Oh, what, and, uh, what happened to your uh, big interview, I remember, with... Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant. Oh, that 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 was that happened. That was in 06 as well. That's all. You guys start recruiting <laughs> these old wrestlers again. Yeah, I, I did. I can tell is you. Mouth of the South. I can still tell around? you. Yeah, is he's, that the he's dude? Around. I'll tell you all yeah. the wrestlers that I've interviewed just to keep it short here. But 
I've interviewed Greg Valentine, uh, DDP, Eric Bischoff, uh, Jimmy Valiant. Well, I think about Bischoff, where I, got, I was listening to yours, <laughs> man. You kept asking him about wrestling. Like, what was it like to wrestle Shane McMahon? You're talking about a guy who <laughs> ran a multi-million dollar company into the ground. And you're like, well, what was that like when you had that match against whatever? Come hey, on! You know, I, I get into the moment. What are you doing you know? with that? Hey, you know, it, it was fun. <laughs> and then I got to interview uh, Dave Hebner. Twin brother of Earl Hebner, you know? whoever the hell he is, he's a referee. Know. You know, Jimmy oh, Hart. Referee. Now you're interviewing refs. <laughs> Jimmy Hart was part of a group called the Gentries that had a song. <laughs> in the 60s. So, uh, so what is what is it like <laughs> to blow that whistle? <laughs> <laughs> now he had the megaphone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Jimmy Hart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You remember this song, Blind Dog? Okay. Yeah. I keep on dancing. Oh yeah. Dude, listen yeah. to the way the drums on the beginning is. Sounds like guys on meth. I keep on dancing. <laughs> That's why when they had the rock and roll, rock and wrestling connection, Jimmy Hart was kind of in charge of that because he he did some singing of his own and all that too. Uh, I just want to know where the heck's the drummer who did this. <laughs> That's that a question a nice edit right on a whim right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Now I'll start calling you Slice and Dice Guy. Well, we're taking to the top of the hour. Top of the hour means CNN News. And after that, we got... Uh, uh, our, is Stan Case waiting by there? Uh, you know the CNN dude? Yeah, he's waiting. Oh, yeah, after he, that, we got our interview. you see the tie he's got? I'm not really into ties. Really? Yeah. How I about didn't. that guy out in uh, Chicago that got fired from uh, wearing a green bay tie at his uh, auto dealer? Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I guess his mom was a diehard Green Bay fan, but uh, he wore a Green Bay tie to his auto dealership, and they canned him for yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't forget tonight at seven or eight thirty, rather, we got our interview guest on the Tuesday Night Experiment, Elliot Tiber. An author. Uh, he was. He wrote the book Taking Woodstock. It was mm-hmm. turned into a motion picture. Well, he's got another book called Palm Trees on the Hudson, and he's going to be talking. He'll be our kind of the closing out the show here at eight thirty uh, on the, this edition of the show. And right now we got CNN News, and then we'll reload with the Tuesday Night Experiment. Yeah. Now broadcasting in HD digital. This is Roots Radio Pioneer ninety point one KSRQ Thief River Falls Grand Forks. Identify yourself. It's the Tuesday Night Experiment. Broadcasting live from the center of new media at Northland Community and Technical College. Oh, yes, indeed. The roller disco is filled up right now. Pretty roller soon, disco. Pretty soon we're going to have couples dance, but right now it's uh, Catch as Catch Can Free for All Roller Derby Rama. No, it's a Tuesday Night Experiment. I'm Glenn Brock. <laughs> it, does, it does sound like roller derby music. Kind of like the episode of Chips when they had the roller the roller disco episode. <laughs> Two, two-parter. And then uh, Leif Garrett on there. Oh, one of my favorite episodes. Oh, man. That's got to be somewhere on the internet. Oh, I'm oh, sure it check is. that out, dude. We'll Chips, find it. Uh... We'll find Uh-oh. it. Three minutes after 8 o'clock on this Tuesday night. Eight bells. Eight bells, baby. And oh, we're yeah. going to uh, do a little brief check here. I wonder what the weather's doing about now here. We're still sitting at 16, it looks like. Oh, let me mm-hmm. ref- shall I refresh it. 18. 18. We Man, ju- what a mild day. Man, rock and roll. I mean, we're we're going to love this because it's going to get dirty cold, it looks like, as we head into uh, Sunday. Sunday, yep. yeah. It's not going to be fun. Deep freeze time. Saturday night into Sunday. Yeah, we're going to be hitting the deep freeze into the better part of next week, so... Let's enjoy this while we have it. Probably just get out and knock some of that snow out from uh, underneath, you know, on the cars and the wheel wells, all that. Yeah, no kidding. This whole this little storm that we had this weekend. Holy crap. You know. So, what, do you got heat in your house yet? Yeah, yeah. I was going to tell you guys, you know, well, yeah, we got heat in the house. Breaking the, news. The furnace, Breaking news. The furnace works. We, we had uh, somebody uh, fix it, so we didn't have to pay 400 bucks, you know. Just right on. Had somebody that we knew. What, did the pilot there. light just go on or what? It was a motor. The motor just... Oh, the blower thing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then, uh, you know, we found out, too, that everything's good as far as the uh, rent situation. Remember I was telling you that? Oh, Glenn yeah. You're, that. you're maybe yeah, scooting not out sure of that about, place? You know, yeah, April. yeah. Well, the will so you're here for good. Yeah. Yeah. We, we found out that uh, they had no intentions of it, uh, charging the rent or to make it go higher after April. Oh. So. Well, did you tell them, hey... You well, stiff me on rental, break your legs. I just told told the guy, I said, you know, if you guys are in charge of the house, that you know, the reason why I am here is because 
I got no place else to go, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to. Hey, go, there's going to be a new you know, homeless shelter in town. Yeah, here, well, so. I'd, I'd rather not go to that. You know, hey, you I, know what the best thing about dating <laughs> a homeless woman is? <laughs> what? You can drop them off anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Where, where's Larry Meyer when we need him, I tell you? Yeah. Well, that's an employee at Hugo's. He makes those type of jokes well, yeah, like that, That's too. two inside sports, yeah. dude. <laughs> Well, it's five minutes now, six minutes after eight o'clock. Yikes. Let's, yeah. It's time now for uh, my favorite segment on the show, because we got to get this wrapped up before 8.30, is uh, Sugar Sean's uh, DVD review. Oh, uh, really? Oh, oh, great. Exciting. Man. Tape's rolling. Time is money. In time for the DVD. <laughs> time is money. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm going I'm to argue my point on this for just one second. Okay, <laughs> when I thought we we're gonna do karaoke, you know, I thought, okay, we're not gonna butcher no music, right? You know, and I, that's why I practiced. That's why I did as well as I did. You guys coming down and you know, laugh and laughing and talking over. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I hear it. Yeah. I was doing a great job at the recording studios, but just love. And then all of a sudden we hear this. And, uh, I still have con- <laughs> connections at Atlantic and Geffen. I can uh, okay. send them a copy okay. of that. Well, they might like the demo. Maybe we can do Sound of Young demo. America over here. Sugar Shock Slauson. Yeah, next to Aaron Carter, there's Sugar Shock Slauson. Yeah. I'll be the next one to rehab. Anyway. Oh, oh, dump that off. This is the demo. Oh, I already anyway. heard that twice already. That's, uh, geez, you, know, you know, down the road, you, you could... Uh, grow up. <laughs> hey, that was Dr. Phil. Yeah, that was. Right. <laughs> so the only reason why you're famous is because of Oprah. Oprah, Rotten you know what? Did you see that she found her uh, sister, Step-sister her half, or Steph, her half sister? Yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, wonderful, warm, Good for warm Oprah. and fuzzies. But figuring warm and fuzzies, Slauson, what do you got for us in the DVD review here this week? Well, this week we got a jam-packed. Uh, edition of the DVD This is the one review. where you say, "Here's this movie." Uh, what do you guys think of it? No, that's weak cheese. <laughs> well, bro. you know, I mean. I'll let you guys decide, I guess. So. <laughs> no, do you, do you ever get movies out of that box thing where you work at? I have a couple times, but most of the time, if I'm going to rent something, it's from Netflix or whatever, you know, or watch the instant stream online. Right, right, yeah, yeah. You know that 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 Netflix stream, man, that's pretty badass. Man. Yeah, you know, you can you can watch anything you want. Uh, this week we got Secretariat, two disc Blu-ray DVD combo coming out today, and that's. To me, mm-hmm. it reminds me a lot of just Sea Biscuit because it's a horse movie. Air Biscuit, whatever. Air bi- yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it just it, it kind of runs the same course, kind of like Sea Biscuit. Well, yeah, because it's a horse movie. Oh, uh, no. just like the flu, it runs its course. Yeah, like a horse. I'm uh, waiting for the uh, movie on Seattle Slu, the other horse that uh, won a bunch of races. <laughs> <laughs> Bar- Barbaro, it'd be like 20 minutes. Jeez. Uh, this one for all you horror fans out there. Secretariat again. Yeah. <laughs> the unrated version. Yeah. No. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Saw, the final chapter, came out today on a two-disc Blu-ray, Blu-ray DVD combo and digital copy pack for all you horror fans that love Saw. Oh, come on. You now, know, they beat that movie in the ground. Hey. You see, myself, you know, I, agree I, with you, I love the horror. I do. But I'm more into Freddy Krueger, Mike Myers, Jason, right? you know, Chucky. Yep. Chucky. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, the, sometimes they can push a horror movie too far. Bridget Jones. When they did the terrible. when they did the remake of uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street this year or last year, yeah, I bought it thinking that it's going to be just as good as the originals and all that. No, they could have done a better job. They could have just had Robert Englund. Well, oh, yeah, it. you yeah. got to have the classic. Robert yeah, Englund yeah, is the man. <laughs> I mean, the, the guy who did it, I mean, he was scary looking even without the mask. And I, you know, yeah. That was Kelly Leak from the Bad News Bears, man. Wow. Well, yeah. well yeah. I tell you. Yeah. Regar- He's Mr. Re- useless Information Guy. Re- regardless of who he was. Yeah. Yeah. Not saying he, I mean, he did a good job as far as, you know, doing the Freddy character. But then the voice and all that stuff? No. It, it, I didn't like the voice. Yeah, it had to be deeper and darker. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. They should have they turned the Isaac, pitch Isaac, down Isaac Hayes that. died two, three years ago. It, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. Deeper, dark. Like for all you thoughts. astronauts out there or any people into space. Oh, space boy. Yeah, space balls. Yeah. No, anyway. Uh, Inside the Milky Way come, came out today on Blu-ray. It's like a like that. Uh, and I'm excited. Why? Yeah. Well, 
<laughs> came out on Blu-ray, and uh, it, it's another space documentary showing about Milky Way. You know? Space boy. And no, we're not talking the candy bar. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, canned laughter. Yeah, I love it. And finally, the last thing that I found that came out on Blu-ray. Is this today, the pick of the week? Nope. This oh, is okay. just the releases right now. The Color Purple, the movie that yes, was out. Yes. The movie that came out in 1985. <laughs> Okay. Finally comes out on Blu-ray today. The Color Purple. Uh-huh. With Danny Glover. Yeah. Danny Glover. Uh, uh, I'm trying to... Yeah, I know. O- o- Oprah was in it. <laughs> Oprah, yeah. Steven Spielberg had a hand in it. Since we're talking about Oprah, got a reference. All you it. movie nuts, man. Well, I... <laughs> I, I stopped watching good movies when they stopped producing VHSs, man. You know, today uh, I actually got a movie that I'm probably going to do a review on next week. Uh, Saving Silverman. You remember that movie uh, from ten years I ago? Remember that? I can movie. say ten years. Oh, ago. Oh yeah, that's where that dude gets married and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yep, yep. I'm gonna do that's a, actually kind of a I'm funny gonna be, movie. I'm gonna be watching that tonight. Next week, I'm gonna do a really good review of that. Uh, the one guy that's in the Geico commercials is in that movie. Yeah, and he was also in Full Metal Jacket and Jack Black. Yeah, Steve Zahn. See, I know movies, man. Yeah. What yeah. happened to Steve Zahn? I don't know. I remember hap- or happy. What'd you do with him, Sloss? Happy Texas. Yeah. <laughs> you got him in your backyard or I something? I would call <laughs> Sam and Silverman more or less like a stoner film. I'm not a stoner myself, but I would think that oh, it would I see you fit that category. Oh, I see you all behind that grocery store. So, next to Far Out Burning Man. Burning a wheel, whatever. Next to Far Out Man, I think that would be. So, this week's uh, Picks of the Week, I picked out two classics. Because I could, I, I didn't watch anything current at all. This, no, 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 this number one. Around. The first one was one I watched off of Crackle.com this weekend, because you can, it's just like it's just like Hulu, and uh, you can watch full length movies, you know, with ads, of course, because it's okay for them to do that. I'm a bigger fan of Hulu, but yeah. but Crackle, you can check out Crackle. It's it's, it's just like Hulu. Anyway. Okay. The, b- the movie that I picked out, the first classic for this week, is Meatballs 2 oh, from man. 1984. I haven't seen that movie in years, dude. And, you know, I kind of forgot about this movie at first because I knew that there was four Meatball movies out there. But I forgot about, you know, oh. the the Alien, you know, remember yeah. the Alien? Meat, but, you know, you said there's four Meatballs movies, but yeah. three that, or one that was actually good? Well, the first one came out in 79, 80, you know. And then they should have just left it. And then it's funny because this one uh, has John Larroquette as uh, like a you know he's protecting the like a, he's like a sergeant but like instructor kind of and uh, he it's kind of, kind of reminds me of his role on Stripes kind of except this one he plays kind of a feminine more instructor you know so, okay okay uh, because of, this film has nothing to do with the original Meatballs many people write it off as terrible. Yeah, me, me. Actually, it, it's that's where they wear the cheesy '80s shorts in there. And you know, yeah, of course, to I me, know that movie. To me, you know, if, if I was dressed like that now, you know, Slauson, nowadays you could put that back in the two dollar bin at Walmart, buddy. Yeah, nowadays, yeah. if you saw, <laughs> nowadays if you saw somebody dressed like that, of course, yes, that would be considered maybe a nerd or, or whatever. Shorts. That stuff you know? is coming back, dude. Well, I would hope it. I mean, look at all the people with, like the guys with the hair, you know, the uh, way like Michael J. Fox had his hair and all that back in the day. Mm-hmm. I would love to look like that. You know, I, I'm not, and I'm not joking. Spandex, well, right? I'm just saying, you know, it's just, he wants to be the bad guy in the Karate Kid. It, it's just a <laughs> to me a very a normal look, more or less. I think. But anyway, so where was I? And actually, you know, it's it's kind of a bad movie, but that's half the charm. The rest comes from the fact that it it is so fun and stupid. Just like Caddyshack 2, this is a really strange, kitschy 80s comedy that couldn't get Bill Murray back. Mm-hmm. So that's Meatball 2. And the final, final pick of the week from 1992, where I, tell, I was talking about it a little bit last week. Uh oh. Beyond the Law. Now, <laughs> Beyond the Law. Now, before I even mention about have you guys. Have you guys even seen me on the law? Or, no, no, or Charlie no. She, do a Charlie Sheen when he goes undercover in the biker gang movie? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I recognize him. He, play, he it plays now. Sid with uh, Michael Madsen's like the head okay. guy of the biker gang, and then he ends up like becoming a uh, part of the biker gang, and like he get, becomes loyal to him and stuff. These guys are my friends. You know, and, oh, and then he so. ends up getting all drugged out when he takes his. The best is when he takes the snort, sniff of cocaine in the movie. Okay. The first time he yeah. does it, like he just gives in. The face he makes, I'm sure he never made that. He hasn't made that face in 15 years. You think it was real coke? Probably was. Yeah. 
Wow, you guys, you pretty much, I'm surprised. You know, doing, I, Sid? Dude, you got to realize we're older than you. Yeah, I, I know that, but I, you know, this is this is a surprise to me because I didn't think you, you know, when I mentioned it before, uh-huh. I, I never thought you'd seen it before. Shut so up. You what know? do you think of Last Action Hero? I, I enjoyed it. Ah. Uh-huh. I really did. I wanted to get the Burger King cups and all that stuff, you know. That's what I, you know, that's how much I enjoyed it. Have you seeked them out on eBay? I might have to do that. I got the yeah? home, I got the home alone cups from Hardee's or whatever, but yeah. I got the Smurf <laughs> cups from Hardee's. Yo, I had They're actually I had glasses. Those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah, that's you know, Glenn pretty much said it in a heartbeat, you know, and you did too, Scott, about Oh, you know, someone tweeting you over there about no. Beyond oh. the Law. <laughs> it's a, it, to me, I, I really, I really did enjoy the movie. You know, I think it, it also could clarify as another stoner movie, I guess, if you call it that. I don't well, you know why. Stoner movie. I don't know why I want to keep going to that, but you know, it just what's up with all these drug references? What, yeah. what, is, what, is, what are you trying to have people in the audience? No, 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 the fact that, of the music, I'll that's do that used, if you say you had a headache. But I mean, the music that's used in, in the film, the the story itself, the way the actors pr- portray. They played a Candlebox know. song. Oh, he's on the weed. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, like I say, uh, you know, I I really enjoyed it. But, you know, everybody needs to go out, go on Amazon.com, go buy it. It's like cheap, nine dollars. You know, why $4? can you not get it at your local library? Come on now. Yeah, well, you, you probably library, could, but I think library matters. you know I've seen you know going to the library, you know some of the wicked films they got over there. You know they got really? a lot of the rated R stuff. Or, they do, you know, oh. yeah. And you figure a library would have PG stuff or G rated no, stuff? No, no, no. They even no. got movies with nudity. In yep, there. they do. Yeah, and it's just like well, foreign films. Well, I <laughs> don't know about that, but I bet they can order them, man. The stuff that's on CBC yeah. late night back in the day. But it, it, it just you know <laughs> I don't know. I mean it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you guys, that's my DVD review, DVD picks of the week. Next week, a big review on Saving Silverman. So, Saving I've Silverman. I've seen that movie a million times, and man. It, it does mm-hmm. not get old. It does not get old. Well, it's kind of classic. It, technically, yeah. it did get old. but anyway. Well, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, because Comedy <laughs> Central played the snot out of it. Well, I remember seeing it on HBO. That's my first clip well, of it, you know. Well, my brother and I, we love that You got the movie. bucks to afford all those uh, yeah. premium channels. Well, I got the same yeah. channels. Sean with like, the fins. I got the same channels Glenn got, so I got the digital cable and all that, so I mm-hmm. and the DVR and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, I've been recording what, Raw what, and all that. Yeah, what else do you record on your DVR besides Monday Night Raw and SmackDown and anything wrestling related? Well, I, I when I first got digital, uh, the digital cable box uh, in November, I was exploring the Planet Green channel. The Emerald Emerald Live mm-hmm. or Emerald you know plant Emerald Green or whatever they call it, yeah. Learn about you know local foods and stuff. And wee, 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 wee. I, I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> and then if they show like you know a good movie on a good channel like uh, the Goonies were on HD the Movie Net, Kid yeah. Zone. Uh, HD the Movie Net, you know or whatnot or uh, HD Net. The, the Hillary Swank Karate Kids on. <laughs> Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, there's some, I mean, why redo a good movie? I mean, come on now. Wax on, wax off. I mean, hey. <sighs> need need money, no insurance. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, uh, so I tell we, What do we got? 10 minutes to yak here? Yeah, we got Too a little much. bit. Of, we got the open set here. Uh, seven, seven to ten minutes before we gotta. So there you go, guys. Rock on out of here. Yeah, the Sugar Sean <laughs> DVD review. What do you got for you? You got any teasers for next week? Just pretty much just saving Silverman for now. That's that it. janitor looks bored. I see him walk by like four times. <laughs> He's spying on us. He's, he wants to know what the heck those these guys are up to. He's looking through his He's private. He's like. Eyes. It's like Beyond the Law. Oh, I've seen that movie too. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Kids across the hall are still watching their closed circuit TV. Oh yeah, yeah. Still got class going on here at uh, Northland Community and Technical College, the Upper Falls campus. Hey, they're paying for it. Might as well. Dude. Well, yeah, yeah. You kind of have to applaud the ones that actually show up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. do they still party like they do over at Campus Court over there? You know, it's been so many years since I've been over <laughs> at Campus Court. <Right. laughs> 
<laughs> right? Like, last time I was there was when I was back in broadcasting, probably 2001, 2003. Oh, so. wow. Well, I used to party across the street over there in the, what is that? The Sunrise Apartment. The, village, the village. village. Yeah, Northland Village. I lived oh, right we, across it, there We before. had some stories. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Not radio worthy. No, I, 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 uh, funny story for those who don't know, whatever, I used to live across over there. I used to live right across from the college oh, here, so. Those walls would talk. Right. We would, we would do. Yeah, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, the reason the reason why they were in such poor shape and had to be redone yeah. is because uh, of some, yeah. some people we may have. Sassy Pants had the apartment and tore it up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> drove his motorcycle through the... the I played some motorhead <laughs> while, you know, oh. drive the motorcycle or the motorcycle or whatever. Motorcycle? That's Arlo Guthrie, you know, motorcycle or whatever oh, the motorcycle is. Come on, jeez. Oh, oh, come on. You better get back to smoking the pot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh. you were talking about beer earlier, so I just kind of went yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah. What, what are you going? You, you, I don't you, you know. Had to, you had to up the ante on it. I don't you, know. You didn't just, even have any idea what you're talking about. I've never even done any <laughs> of this stuff that we're talking about. And you know what? I can be proud, but I remember. Whatever. I remember, like, when Slauson was going to school here, I was mm-hmm. in my last year of school, yeah. and he was going, and you're like, hey, Slauson, you come over to a beer mixer or whatever. And you're like, no, I don't. He doesn't drink. No, no, listen, here's that. He's like, no, I don't drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Sean, Frankie, what do you want? Man, we'll call him Frankie then. What do you want? Come on, you come over a beer. What, what, what do you drink? Uh, I, I drink Pepsi. <laughs> what do you drink Pepsi? Because it gives me Pepsi. <laughs> Oh, that's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? That's what I, I think I remember that joke. Yeah, yeah. I almost wanted to clothesline you. <laughs> <laughs> Gives me Pepsi. Ah, yeah, jeez. Hey, I was talented Slauson, back then. <laughs> jokes like that haven't got laughs since the vaudeville era. Do 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 do. Oh, oh my goodness! I remember you, I, the first time I met you. What night? I was, you know, I was a you know, little wisecracker. I then, remember so. when you I'm walked. To take you up to the schooner, man. <laughs> Give me a Pepsi. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I made it made light. No, I just okay. remember you, the, the old Slauson coming in like he, he was doing the morning country shift. And he comes in. It's around noon. Usually somebody come in. The yeah. news director did the news in, the, in, our, in our setup we used to have. He's like, oh, anybody want to come in to do the noon news? Ever, anybody? <laughs> and like there's no soul. I think they all went to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the early days. Oh, yeah. I know. You know, I was I, I was going to our, our website here, the Pioneer Night for One website, yeah. and I was looking at all the classic videos that they had. Yeah, did you, know? you see classic Mark Allen on yeah, there? Yeah, you know, I, could, I yeah. recognized the voice right away. It was like, man, he looked pretty good at 19, probably 85, I'm guessing, or looked whatever. pretty good in those yeah. shorty shorts. I was like, is that Michael J. <laughs> Fox? Oh, <is> <laughs> And then the other one was uh, Don Jorison, man. I tell you. Oh, yeah. He looked Donnie totally different. J. Donnie J. He looked different. Much props. He told yep. me that he got you started in radio. That's right. He gave yeah. me my first gig out here when I was 15. Yeah. He wasn't blind dog back then. He was hard to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. See, because we, we got to talking and because and I was telling about our show and what, everything. You, corner, you cornered him in a store or what happened? How did you, no, you get he, Donnie he J? still does sales and stuff and he's, you know, coming oh, to the store. Oh, yeah. Donnie, he's still doing wearing the sales the weasel thing. Wearing the Australian hat and shorts or whatever, yep. you know. And, yep. But, yeah, we, we, were talking about, we were talking about you, Scott. And, you know, we were talking uh, about how you got started and everything because I was Curious, you know, I'm starting to think he could possibly be my father. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you know, I, 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 I'm a type of guy that loves a good. I'm gonna pull a Oprah, man. I'm the type of guy that loves a good story and, and what you know. Yeah, Donnie J got learn me about. I like to learn about the broadcasters who I'm working with. So you know, just, you tell Donnie J about. Oh, I got a little show. Oh, it sounds like a bunch of crap. You got out there. <laughs> no, he he he's he said it. Yeah, give her a listen, you know. And, I listened to that once and I puked my guts. And then I, you know, I, I, I would see Howard Rocky or well, that, you know, even though I never worked with the guy, you know, he, yeah, well, you, yeah. I, I, I could say he's one of my heroes Dude, too. Dude, you would right? hate his word wrangle. Wow. He, he would have been buried alive. Yeah. If he would have put up with me, like the 2002 mm-hmm. of me or whatever, and, and him or whatever, boy, I don't know what would have happened. You would have been buried out <laughs> there in that Iowa cornfield. But it just, I don't know. I, I look up to these guys, you know what I mean? The, yeah. These so, people so have you been plugging us to Rocky now, too? Yeah, I've been mean, uh, getting the word around to anybody that well, I, I bet can, he you know? just rolled Has, his eyes when you mentioned our no, name. No, he was, the, he was Does happy. Howard Rocky know I still exist? Yeah. Right? Yeah, he, 
He said he used to listen to you on your, your your blind side that you used to have. Yeah? Yeah, he said he listened once in a while. Right. Just to see what the kids are up to, if they're any <laughs> so around or whatever. Yeah. He's just listening yeah. and just cringing at some of the... <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't what know. Happened I mean, my it, it, what happened to my medium? Yeah, well, Rocky it, liked me, man. Yeah, it's yeah, just... Like, Howard's a good guy. It's yeah. just when I see these people, it just, you know, they tell me their stories, I, I get so astonished because it just... It gets all verklempt. Away. That's where I want to be You know how much history theories, is you know? right here in this little uh, yeah. area, dude? And even us three, you know, what's history is I'm right here between us three. <laughs> put us all together, man. Yeah, uh, we're yeah. the, about a thimble's worth. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we're, there's there's a reason why the experiment exists. So well, yeah, know. because it exists because of things like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. No, oh, oh, so wow. yeah, you've been talking to Jorstead. Yep, you've yep. been talking to Howard Rocky. Yep. You've been messing with. You've been talking to uh, Hulkran too while you're at it. Or what? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he. We're friends on Facebook now. Oh, yeah. Alternative. He's the Bob. only. He's the only one on there that has a Facebook page. I try and I talked to Lee Richards. You guys know Lee Richards. Oh, so yeah. oh yeah, 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 yeah. The, the less Nesman comes, of KTRF. Yeah, he, <laughs> come, he comes to the Hugos once in a while, and uh, I tell him about the show and all that. And, you I, know, I'll make a, I'll make uh, an appointment not to listen. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. No, uh, he's Howard. Uh, yeah, he uh, got me my gig up here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Regardless, and man, he also good. got me in trouble with the former president of the college, Mr. Orly Gunderson. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I mentioned him. <laughs> he comes to the store, too. You know how many people come to the store that used to work here or whatever and all that? God, you're just nothing but a gossip and Nelly. I, 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 I try to go for the best, you know. And, and they, uh, you know, I find them, they find me, whatever, you know. Did Jorston tell you how many women I had in the studio here? No, we didn't go that far. Come on, Donnie J. He just told me that he got, you know, kind of, you got the ball rolling kind of. Got started anyway. Kind well, of. Look, ah, yeah. Yeah. look, I went to big time radio and now look where I'm at. Yeah. You know. Listening to Sugar Sean yeah. to name drop. I was just kind of wondering how all that stuff happened. But, you know. Don't oh, smoke well. crack in dark alleys in Grand Forks, <laughs> man. That's that's what it ended up doing. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was the uh, middle of the day. At yeah, a it was the middle court. of the day. Yeah. Right court. behind a cop shop. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Hanging out, loitering in front of the Plain Brown Rapper. Yeah. So, you know, guys, we should do something special. You know, next week is our 10th episode, you know. You've been keeping track? Yeah. Right. I, I write down the number of the episode. See, you know, I'm, I'm we... working on getting an interview with uh, a guy from a space rock group called Zolar X. It came out in the 70s. They were kind of a lost act that we're all in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. Yeah, a guitarist, Weigar Weigarist. I interviewed him a couple years back. Uh, we're going to get a, like a five-year update here on what's been going on with Space Rockers Zola RX. Cool. I've been trying to work with a member of uh, the punk group Against Me who will be in Fargo here February 8th at the Hub. I'm I just found a CD single of theirs at home. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're working on trying to get something with a member of that. I don't know uh, if that's going to show up. Oh, can we'll... I say what I'm going to try to do? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm going to try to get an interview with the lead singer of Clutch. <laughs> mm, yeah I'm intrigued I'll just call him up dude Because I got his home phone number out. Brother's got a hook up yeah. Yeah, yeah Absolutely Hey Neil Fallon If you're listening Just call us <laughs> Give us give us a shout A hoot holler Whatever <laughs> it takes brother Well you know We got a big interview Coming up here At the bottom of the hour We're kind of wrapping up The show with Elliot Tiber Here uh, on the Tuesday Night Experiment Yeah it's already 829 dude Yeah after that uh, Like I said We're going to We're blazing on out of here So thanks for listening And we got Elliot Tiber On the way next Keep your radio tuned The Pioneer 90.1 For the last half Of the Tuesday Night Experiment Sassy Today's episode Rattlesnake at the Pond Oh no a rattlesnake Sassy help <laughs> You will, but first you want to talk about shelter pets? <laughs> the majority of pets in shelters are there due to owner-related issues like divorce or allergies? Save us, Sassy! <laughs> what, Sassy? You wish you were videotaping this? Sassy! Sassy is brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. Remember, adopt. Programming is supported by Ampers, offering an opportunity to discover what's new on the Minnesota art scene at Ampers.org. Ampers.org has more than 1,200 music, arts, and cultural stories including many produced by this radio station. Information and audio at Ampers.org. 
Amper's Diverse Radio for Minnesota's communities. Glenn Brockett with Pioneer 90.1 FM, Tuesday night experiment. And on the telephone, I have a, an author of a fantastic book that came out here in the month of January. Actually, it's a prequel to his best-selling book, Taking Woodstock. The name of the book is called Palm Trees on the Hudson, A True Story, The Mob, Judy Garland, and Interior Decorating. It's uh, with great pleasure that I welcome back to the airwaves of KSRQ 90.1 FM, the legendary L. Elliot Tiber, and good evening, and welcome back to our airwaves. It's been uh, since 2009 since we last spoke. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't get any older, and I still look like Brad Pitt since it's radio, I can say that. Oh, yeah. Hey, whatever works. I mean, you got to play, gotta play the aspects of the theater line, man. Okay. This, this book I had a chance to read here. I ended up getting an advanced copy on here last month, and uh, I spent uh, an afternoon enjoying the book. It was such a, a great story of, of your life. Like I said, this is the prequel to those of you who are familiar with the Taking Woodstock book, as well as the movie uh, directed by Ang Lee. I have to say, this is, a, a like I said, a great, great read, and I definitely encourage a lot of people to get involved uh, with the reading of Palm Trees on the Hudson. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, and this goes in, like I said, where, like you said, Taking Woodstock was about uh, your adventures up there in 69, you know, with the big festival and all of that. This goes into your earlier life, and your earlier life is definitely uh, has many, many moments, a fair share of uh, interesting moments. And we're going to talk about, first of all, we're going to talk about your uh, connection with Judy Garland. Now, when did you first uh, get exposed to the talents of Ms. Garland? I was about eight, and on Tuesday in Brooklyn, where I grew up with a dysfunctional family, my mother had a houseware store, and every Tuesday night, the local cinema gave free dishes. So she took me along, and uh, so she can get extra dishes, which she then sold in the store. Um, And uh, that one night, uh, they were playing Wizard of Oz, and uh, there was no TV then in those years. Uh, That was... um, what, uh, about 1944 or something. And there were no TVs yet, so there was, like today, you see it all the time on TV. And so I saw this magical thing happen, black and white, and little munchkin people, and witches, and flying monkeys. <laughs> it was just, it blew my mind. I didn't, didn't, didn't know anything about that kind of world. And uh, I had a hard time figuring out it was fantasy, because um, this wonderful Judy Garland, and singing somewhere with the rainbow, and then uh, clicking her heels and she's back home to a loving family which is something that i didn't have Mm -hmm. and uh so that's how it resonated with me and i dare say with the millions of people around the world then and since it still uh, resonates with young people old people yeah people will remember it and it just keeps on growing the whole legend of the wizard of oz i mean they've just recently put out another mammoth set on dvd and it just keeps connecting with 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 younger generations and i think that's uh, definitely attributed to the, the staying power of such a wonderful film and and the talents of Judy herself. Yes. And so that's when my first uh, connection with Judy. And then as I got a little older, I started getting her records. And uh, I was still too young to see her in concerts or anything. Then when we got TV, there was Judy Garland with her own TV series. So I was mesmerized by that. And I had her pictures all over my room. And um, as time went on, uh, and I became an artist, an interior designer, and I made some money, so I was able to see her at the Palace on Broadway and uh, Carnegie Hall, and uh, it was just uh, thrilling. I bought seats. I was making money for me. I bought seats uh, front row center and brought her big bouquets of flowers and um, I handed them to her, and she was as she sat on the stage there singing Rainbow, she leaned over and gave me a kiss and one of the flowers back, so... That was just, I saved that flower for 30 years. Um, and it just was uh, such a magical time for me. And the thing, the, the story, too, about how you, you your patience of, uh, you know, when you found out that Judy was playing, uh, as mentioned in the book, uh, you went back every day to find out more information and how you, you got yourself a position in line. Just so patient because you were just that dedicated uh, to, to seeing her. It was just so passionate the way you felt towards Judy that you would just keep keep hounding until you got the seats that you liked. Yes, yes. And um, so this, uh, the book of Palm Trees on Hudson is about uh, my, uh, it's a prequel to take what's like, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. And it's about my growing up years as a kid and my first memories and my mother, my father, my sisters and all of that and going to uh, uh, 
a yeshiva. My mother wanted to be, me to be a rabbi, and by the time I was 13 and graduating and so-called bar mitzvah of man, I knew there was no God, and so I was first in class, and I had a speech to give on stage, and the auditorium was really also the temple for Saturdays, and so the, uh, the cabinet, the ark that holds the Torah in it is very sacred, and you're not supposed to touch it, only the rabbi. It meant nothing to me. So I went over and I opened the curtains, opened the doors, everybody was shocked, and I announced in Hebrew, then in English, there is no God. <laughs> so <laughs> one of the rabbis come running up with a ruler, they used to hit you with a ruler uh-huh. in those days, and um, come running up to pull me off the stage, everybody was so shocked, and um, I said, Rabbi Weiss, so what are you so upset about? Why don't you tell them about what you did in the back room with me? And I didn't know what was going on, he was doing that to a lot of the boys, I suppose it happened with the girls, too, and, uh, but um, it wasn't, uh, you know, it was like lap dancing, I guess, to describe it on a, I don't know if you have a family show or not, yeah, but no, no. <laughs> anyway, and so he promptly stopped and ran away, and then they dragged me off the stage. I was in heaven, and Mother said, listen, you're going to go to Yeshiva High School and then university and be a rabbi. So I was 16 when I started to leave home and get, rid, get out of that terrible place and go live in Greenwich Village. I was an art student then, and I was going to go to college. I'd pay for myself. My parents didn't have any money. And so uh, my mother said, uh, I want you to be a rapper. I said, listen, uh, this is at the door with my paper suitcases. I knew I was leaving. And um, I said, look, I'll tell you, you have three choices. I want to be either an interior decorator, a a hairdresser, or a ballet dancer at the Metropolitan Opera. Well, she didn't understand what I was talking about. I didn't either. I mean, people were in out in those days. There was no word gay. Mm-hmm. I knew that it was different, and I was attracted to boys, but I didn't understand any of that. I was yeah. 16. Today, at 15, at 12, they all know everything. Mm-hmm. So I went to the subway in a one-way ticket and to got off at Greenwich Village and found myself a garret, an artist a loft studio, a five-floor walk-up with bugs and roaches, which I never saw before. The roaches would never eat my mother's terrible kosher cooking. That's why we had no roaches. <laughs> and my neighbor was this Hawaiian in a muumu with beaded curtains and, and pineapples all over and palm trees and all of this stuff. And he had, we got friendly. He helped me uh, fix up my apartment and showed me where I could go in Washington Square by the big fountain where stand-up comics stood there and artists and musicians. And I would uh, do my little paintings and greeting cards, and I was selling them so I would have some money for college. And by the way, one uh, girl, a black uh, girl, standing next to me doing comedy with a hat on the floor. It turns out it was Whoopi Goldberg years later. She wasn't oh, wow. Whoopi then. Had I known, I would have said, listen, in 40 years I'm going to have a movie and I want you to play me. That's <laughs> how I would, I would have had Whoopi Goldberg play me in the movie, but they didn't ask me. Oh, why not? Yeah, why? hey, that whatever works. I mean, you you could you could definitely I, I can definitely see that happening. You got to open and up. When, and when they tell me, oh, Elliot, uh, be careful. You don't want to go over the edge. I have never seen the edge, so I don't know what people are talking about. Over <laughs> the edge. They think that Whoopi Goldberg would be over the edge. I don't think so. No. I- Anyway, so I was working. You may have a question. I just go on and on. You have to stop me. Well, no, I, this is all very interesting to me. I'm just kind of you're, you're telling a really good tale of where your life was moving here at the point. And uh, when did you get, get the job uh, doing the window dressing? Uh, well, I graduated Hunter College and I had majored in art and design in Brooklyn College. I studied with. I didn't know they were going to be great. Mark Rothko and Ed Reinhardt, Kurt Sullivan, who were the founders of New York School of Abstract Expressionism. And uh, now their paintings are in uh, 50, 60, 100 million dollars. Then they were all starving artists and they all committed suicide. So, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, and um, that's why when I graduated um, uh, college as an art major, I just thought I'm not going to be an artist and commit suicide. So I just thought I'd be an interior designer. And uh, nobody would hire me in the, uh, any of the art uh, studios or ad agencies as an artist because the portfolio from under college was nothing. It was pathetic compared to the uh, Pratt Institute or Rhode Island School of Design. And I didn't know that. But So I walked into what I thought was a big department store. It was called W&J Sloan's mm-hmm. on Fifth Avenue and uh, 45th Street. And uh, about a seven-story building and a whole department store, I thought. It was a furniture store. Actually, it was the most important interior decorating store in America, coast to coast. 
and I didn't know it. And they had a job. I went to personnel. They said, we have a job in display. So I didn't know what that was, but they said, go in the lower basement, the sub-basement, and see Mr. Bono, this mad Russian. Mm -hmm. So I went down there, and I see these uh, uh, cherubs all over the place, and silks and satins hanging from the walls, and crystal chandeliers, and uh, gold-decorated furniture, and and, uh, you know, uh, zebra rugs and all of this stuff I'd never seen in my life, and uh, in some magazines, perhaps. And I go back there, and there's this drunk Russian man wearing a suit that was five sizes too small for him in a boutonniere. <laughs> and I had my portfolio, and I opened it up naively, put it on the desk, and he's not even looking at them. He w- I was wearing my first Cardan suit, Pierre Cardan, because okay. that's what you do. Mm-hmm. You did then. And... Um, he was looking at uh, at my tush because uh, I wore a tight suit. I didn't know. And uh, so he said, you're hired. I said, but you didn't look at anything yet. He said, you're very talented. You're hired. When could you start? I said, now. He said, sure, now. Uh, so uh, he said, me, he said, well, look, we're doing the Fifth Avenue windows, and Ray, who's in charge, is usually drunk. So you go up and you tell him that you're there to help him, and let's get it done. And you have a whole staff and all of that. So we went upstairs, and there they are, the technicians and the wallpaper hangers, and everybody's waiting on Ray. And Ray's laying there on silk cushions with a cherub in his arm, drunk as could be. And so they're all looking at me. Well, I said, okay, I'll do it. And I looked at the sketches they had and the plans, and I knew how to read blueprints because I studied at school, and I, mm-hmm. I did all of these windows, a living room, a dining room, a bathroom, and you know, studio room and all of that, but I went throughout the store and picked up things that I liked. I didn't know the word eclectic, that that's what I was doing, and I started picking up things from different periods and times and um, did these five windows overnight, and the windows were closed, so they opened in the morning so people that they have new customers would see it, but they opened at 8 o'clock so that the chairman of the board would come down and the president of the store and my boss And I went out and exhausted a whole night, uh, because I had a whole crew of about 30 people, so we were able to do it. And the curtains opened, and they oohed and on, and the crowd started forming, and everybody was carrying on. I didn't know what that was like, Broadway to me, a set for Broadway, and carrying on. And the CEO was telling my boss, boy, Walter, you really outdid yourself. These are magnificent. Sloan's never had anything like this. We're going to have them do this in California, in Beverly Hills store, and show them pictures of this and all of that. And uh, so that's how my career was launched in Fifth Avenue. I was getting $50 a week, which is what they paid then. And um, within six months, uh, I would be all in a company, a major real department store. Uh, the head saw my work in the magazines there, and he hired me for double the salary, 100 and then Lord and six months later, Lord and Taylor for 150 a week. It went on and on. It was just magic time. And so I was able to move out of the, the roach uh, trap in Greenwich Village. I moved uptown. I started, you know, having a whole career, and I was getting to be an expert. At it. And I was also painting. So I put my own paintings in the windows in these model rooms in both stores and in Lord and Taylor's, and they started to hand them in the gallery. So I was in a gallery. But I made the mistake, invited my mother, my family to come see it. My mother, who never liked anything I did, she looked at it. She says, I don't understand it. She says, it doesn't look Hamish, which is Jewish for homie. Mm-hmm. In other words, it wasn't Salvation Army rejects, which is what she had. Mm-hmm. She used to go with my father in their truck on and six in the morning, whatever people were dumping furniture on the sidewalks. That's what they dragged into the house. It wasn't even made to the Salvation Army yet. So that's how I began my career as an interior decorator. And we're talking with Elliot Tiber, author of a great book called Palm Trees on the Hudson. And you mentioned uh, your mother and uh, her reaction. Reading this book, it was it was definitely uh, your mom didn't really approve of what you did, but I think she approved more or less uh, of some of the money you started to bring in, though. Uh, yes, but she knew I was making money, and uh, so that part she liked, but she always dragged me in. The best moment for her, though, when... Uh, I was working, uh, after I graduated college, I was working for two years, and I get a call from Hunter College. My uh, professor that I'd studied with was retiring, and he recommended me, so they hired me. And uh, so full-time teaching uh, at the college is really two days a week, so I was able to keep freelance work and teach. So when I told her I was now a college professor, she went, she had her, her, uh, imaginary orgasm, I suppose. I don't know. I mean, that was, if you couldn't be a rabbi, you could be a teacher was okay or a doctor. Mm -hmm. 
So her teacher was okay on her list. The decorating, all of that was to her terrible stuff. And she didn't understand. She, I don't understand why people give you money so you should tell them how to live in their homes. That was her answer about everything. So, you know, when she came to my first art show there at um, a gallery at Sloan's, and she looked around and people with the paintings, big mistake to invite her. And she's looking, and I had an abstract expressionist painting because I studied at Rothko. It was the same kind of work. And she looked, and she's telling one uh, wealthy woman who's looking at it and ooing and eyeing, she says, listen, it's my son. I don't know why you would buy this terrible schmutz, which is Yiddish for dirt. She said, if he painted a portrait of me, okay, then it would be interesting. But what is this? It's just schmutz. So I hadn't told my father, please get her out of here fast. Now, what was your father, uh, what was that like, your relationship with him? I mean, you, we talk a lot about your mother and, and just the way she has reacted to your life. What was uh, some of his thoughts on how you were living and the success he that you He never gave achieving? any thoughts. He was, to put it politely, henpecked. There's a PW words that, mm-hmm. that I can't say that in the air. <laughs> so he was henpecked, and he never said anything, but she stirred him up, and when I was a bad boy, he took off his belt and he beat me with it. That's how I got into s <laughs> and and leather, which he never knew that that's why, how it started. And uh, meaning the belt and the beach, and then my mother would come up there after me she said, with dinner on a platter, and she says, now you're a good boy, don't worry, everything's in the right, eat, 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 always food. Now he's very fat. I'm not fat anymore. But I was very fat then, and that's the way Jewish mothers were, I suppose. Uh, Italian mothers are the same. If you feed the family, then you mean you're a good mama. Well, I got a Scandinavian. Uh, I'm from Scandinavian descent, and my mom fed me quite well too. <laughs> and we're going to talk about you know you're you, you're making you're making big waves here uh, in New York City with your designs and whatnot, and it kind of drew the attention uh, of some shadier element, and that kind of led eventually to uh, some some really dicey moments for you, as well as uh, the downfall of your career at that time. How did you get involved uh, with this uh, with the, with organized crime and this whole infamous ship party on the Hudson? Well, this uh, girl I went to Yeshiva uh, Shiva at one point, uh, her, uh, she became a lady of the evening, and she was uh, dating a Supreme Court justice, and she called. We were friends over the years. She said, listen, he, he has a big mansion on Long Island, and I told him about you, and he wants to hire you to be his interior designer. So I went out. I did his home on Long Island. They were delighted with it, and he said, well, listen, uh, the... the um, our, uh, the Crystal Room nightclub in New York, which was a very famous hangout for celebrities and the mob, which I didn't know. Um, the owner wanted uh, to hire me to decorate the club. The club was looking rather shabby, and could I come in and do it? So I did the club, and it was very successful. It took a, about a year. And uh, then he, it was his 50th birthday. He was the fire commissioner in New York, too. It was his 50th birthday, and his wife uh, was throwing him a big party on the Hudson River, on the uh, Hudson River Day Line. as the SS Peter Stuyvesant, which I guess is no more, mm-hmm. but um, a big boat or ship, and um, to decorate it for 500 people. The Mayor Lindsay was going to come, and a guest, a surprise guest, which was Judy Garland, was coming. I was just besides myself. Well, I went to town, and I did it like Arabian Nights with gold columns and palm, a hundred palm trees. And I uh, hired, but then I was out and gay. I hired gay friends to uh, muscle boy types to uh, paint their bodies gold and wear little bikinis to act as the servers and the, the hosts on the boat, all of that. And um, finally, the party night comes, and everybody's on the boat. It was mobbed, and then Judy was late, of course. And as her limo pulled up, everybody went to one side of the boat, and the captain was hysterical, saying, move back, move back. The, the boat was tilting. Oh, shit. The boat was tilting. He thought, we'll sink at the pier. So Judy comes on board, and since I was the host kind of thing for the party, I introduced her, besides myself, to her, to, to everyone with the thing. I did a, a ice sculpture of Judy and the Munchkins and uh, pictures of her all over, and Harvey the fire chief, too. I had to put up his pictures, too. Oh, yeah. After all, it was his birthday. Well, yeah, it makes sense. So, yeah, and Judy, uh, so she sang Over the Rainbow that everyone wanted to hear and a few of her other songs, and she was very drunk and stoned, and we got, I uh, palled around with her, and I got drunk and stoned also, which I did those days, and um, we uh, had some time together. We went to my cabin uh, and uh, to relax a little bit, and we were really talking, and she was giving me some very uh, strong, friendly advice, as drunk as she was, And uh, but I said, Judy, you know, you only marry gay men 
I'm gay. Why don't we get married? <laughs> so she gave me a nice hug and kiss. Liza wasn't around yet, so mm -hmm. I didn't know Liza would be born, and she would marry gay guys, too. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that was that. We went up on the top deck and later on as we got to the Statue of Liberty, which was one of the highlights on the Hudson that we were touring, and the guests by then were all drunk. And um, they started uh, tossing my palm trees into the Hudson River. Rented <sighs> palms on my credit card. A ah, yes. hundred palms. Ah. I mean, uh, the party cost me, not Harvey, unfortunately, fifteen or sixteen thousand dollars, which today would be like a hundred and sixty thousand. And uh, I was very successful then, so I had the credit, so I could do it. Uh -huh. And Harvey was going to pay me back when I had all the bills to show him. And um, anyway, so they threw all these trees in the water. They thought it was funny, and it was too late to do anything. The trees are floating away. And um, uh, two days later, after I sobered up, uh, uh, I went to the club uh, with the bills, and he said, uh, 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 we'll take care of it, we'll take care of it. And then... Three in the morning, I get. I was living on Central Park West, then in ten rooms with antiques, magnificent apartment, mm -hmm. with a housekeeper, and uh, in a muumuu and all of that stuff. And uh, three in the morning, doorbell rings, and there's one of the regulars from the club, Neely, who used to show me a gun he always had. I never knew about guns. To me, it was funny. There was a guy named Vito at the bar. It was Vito Genovese. I didn't know all of these people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just uh, could have been. I would if it was, you know. Uh, Charles Bronson or George Raft, I would think about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, he had a blank piece of paper, took out the gun. He said, listen, I really like you. We got to know each other, and I don't want to have to hurt you. But Harvey wants you to sign the receipt for the uh, party and uh, paid in full. And I said, it's a blank piece of paper. He said, trust me, you want to sign it. And he's pointing the gun. I got so trembling, really shaking. Mm -hmm. I never had this kind of experience. And Harvey was Jewish. I didn't think there's a Jewish mob. Mm -hmm. And so I signed it. And then I went to the club a day later to talk to Harvey about this, about getting paid. And he was really nasty and mean and threw me out. And uh, I had to sell everything in my apartment to pay those bills. I sold everything and I went into severe depression. And I went up to Bethel, where Woodstock was going to be. I didn't know that then. Where my parents and I had done, uh, built a little hotel and motel there on weekends. We thought we'd be really rich, but it was a bust because uh, there was no traffic. It was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, but I did have a barn, which I made into a theater. That part I liked, where I wrote. I started to learn to teach myself to write. I was writing comedy, stand-up stuff. Uh, anyway, so that's, um, I went up there and I spent the whole, uh, uh, winter up there depressed because I lost all my uh, business and my apartment and I was just alone and depressed watching TV. And I kept thinking of, uh, and Judy and Wizard of Oz was on the TV one night and I'm watching it again. And I was thinking of the things she told me about how you fall down and you pick yourself up and you work, figure out a way to survive because you're only at this party once and that resonated with me again well i showered and shaved and got myself together i went back to new york and i started to paint the murals again i was doing murals in apartments for a lot of money and i started to get some clients again and um i didn't know how my whole life would be changed because uh the summer of 69 when i went up to two white lake there were two words that was going to change my whole life again i didn't know those words woodstock festival and it's just amazing how you were able to, I mean, you were left in quite a financial hole, too, uh, as a result of this this party and, and a deep depression that resulted. But the way you were able to bounce back is definitely uh, something that, that really brought the the story here to a real positive, you know, positive conclusion here. And I, I think that that in the whole book in general was a fascinating and very excellent read, sir. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. You're calling me, sir. You must be a teenager. How old are you? Oh, no. That's flattery, my friend. I'm going to be turning <laughs> 35 in May. You are a babe. You are a baby. I'm old enough to be your older brother. I think so. I think that's about right. <laughs> we'll, we'll put the we'll put the ages together. You're what? what I, uh, uh, not a day over 38? Yeah. yeah. Me? Sure. Okay. 30, I'll take 38. Okay. Well, since I'm going to be, I'll be 35. 76 in, I'll be 76 in April. I don't know how it happened. 
So what? So what's been going on with you uh, since the release of this book? Then uh, what's going well, on? Well, this book is only out uh, two weeks. It's just out, and we got sort of five reviews so far. Rave more than rave. Uh, I'm being I'm being called a, a, a combination of Orson Welles and Mae West. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I love that. Uh, and uh, but such uh, rave reviews I never got this for for the Woodstock book or Rob. I had four other books or, and films, but never anything like this. There's calling it bright and literate and funny and touching and moving. All of the words. Somebody said, "Oh, your mother must have written the review." Besides that, she's dead. If she were alive, she wouldn't write that review. <laughs> no, 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 not from what the, I've read about her in these books. No, that'd be the farthest thing from the truth. So uh, that's uh, now I'm waiting. We're trying to get a, uh, a movie out of it, and I'm speaking on shows such as yours and uh, TV, and I'm doing tours of universities. I speak in front of a lot of college students uh, about my experiences mm-hmm. and as a motivational uh, person because uh, college kids don't really know what they're doing yet, and I'm trying to, I try to help them uh, through my stories of how to... Um, Figure out what to do with your life, even, and I tell them it's a day at a time. They don't have to, you know, freshmen take the major. What do I major in? What do I major? They're worried for what to do in four years of college. And I tell them, listen, each semester you might have a different major, and that's okay, too, because you pick up experience along the way. Mm-hmm. So I never thought I'd be an inspirational tool for young students, and uh, I am. So that's really very rewarding to me. Check out this great book. It's Palm Trees on the Hudson. Uh, we've been chatting today with our guest, Elliot Tiber. And uh, anything else, any last words before we send you on your way tonight, sir? Well, it's at Amazon.com and Barnes and & Nobles and bookstores everywhere. And um, so um, uh, that's where you could get it. Mm-hmm. And I hope that it's going to be a movie and I can next year be come back and talk about the movie. Yeah, maybe we can hook up with Ang Lee again. I really did enjoy taking Woodstock. Well, I don't know about Ang. He's off. He's gotten five. He has five other films that he's tied up with for the next five years. So I'm looking. I'm talking to other people. And uh, listen, I sent it to Martin Scorsese two weeks ago, the book, to see because he was one of the, uh, on the credits of Taking Woodstock as one of the executive producers. So I hey, sent it to him. It's about company. the mob, after all, right? Yeah, and I think he'd do an excellent job with your story. Uh, a great book, Palm Trees on the Hudson. I want to thank you uh, once again, Elliot Tiber. And like I said, if we get the movie out, you're definitely welcome to come back on these airwaves and talk about that. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Have a good night, sir. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.